Peace to the saints. Today we have a topic from which we can extract much knowledge. Recently there was a, wouldn't call it an interview, I guess a reality TV bit that was created by Aiden Ross and uh, Charleston White. My only familiarity with Aiden Ross is that he's been on streams with uh, Tate when Tate was talking to Adolf 22 and I could see that he was clearly a, a goofy uh, kid who just wanted to be in the spotlight. Didn't seem to be remarkable in any noteworthy way. And my familiarity with Charleston White is that he says things that are often off color, sometimes true. And he tries to make a living in doing good, which is typical of folks who uh, come out of the pen after doing significant time or even recover drug addicts. Now they want to be a drug counselor. and. Uh, you know, he's very comical. Charleston White certainly has a, a talent for humor. And so you find Charleston White, a representative of the black lumping class, and then you have Aiden Ross, a representation of the Jewish ruling class coming together, two unlikely partners, which is certainly a, an opportunity for great comedy. But you actually, despite Charleston being significantly Aiden senior, you have a recipe for good comedy, but also for a uh, a a power dynamic that is asymmetrical with Charleston White being on the weaker side for a variety of reasons, not only financially, not only in terms of clout, reputation, po uh, popularity, but also experience. Even when you're dealing with a, a youth, which is what Aiden is, who might be immature, he's still very manipulative for he has grown up among people who are clever and wealthy and experienced, and he's had to deal with that his whole life, which is to say manipulation is this is bread and butter. It's, it's really all he knows. It's effortless. Whereas Charleston's grown around lower class, low IQ, black folks, uh, criminal folks, criminal type. And uh, he's not as sharp. Now, Charleston White is bright. There's no doubt about that. But he doesn't breathe in and breathe out manipulation without effort. And we're going to take an analysis of his conversation with Say Cheese, the blogger. And also, uh, if you'd like, we can take a look at the clip of uh, Aiden and Charleston together. We'll do this. Uh, we'll carry on as long as you like if you're supporting the work. Otherwise, I mean, I live in Sin City, Las Vegas. And I'm the mayor. You dig? I got to. <laughs> the people need me. But let's get into this. May we start with our tradition, which is to show love to those who show love to you. Firstly, may I acknowledge. Shout out to George, always coming in with tuition. Very consistent, loyal gentleman. We appreciate you. And I also acknowledge Saint Ach writes. You are not a saint. Stop the lies. Thank you very much. May I also acknowledge Austin writes, uh, hashtag gamer in description. He writes, you about to break hearts. Oh, indeed. And in fact, the, the gamer generation and the uh, what I like to call the porno generation, these folks grew up damaged. Their parents did not properly protect them. You know, as a child, you have inclinations toward sugar. You want to eat a bunch of sweets, but if your parents don't protect you and they allow you to eat a bunch of sweets, your teeth rot and fall out. You see, these kids in this generation, they grew up with parents who didn't protect their minds from the, the poisons of the mind and the spirit, the pornography, the gaming, the excesses of being at leisure. And that's why they're lazy and competent and sexual deviants because they've been exposed to too much. Carrying on. Yeah, we're going to get deep today. Here we go. And do confirm once we get this on that you can uh, hear the audio. It's coming in clearly. So this is an interview from a fellow named Say Cheese. Interviewing Charleston White, which he's done many times. Uh, the first thing I think uh, is of note is I, I like to see people cleaned up and dressed up. And this is actually something I promote. Oh, in fact, oh, yeah, by the way, shout out to the drip. Kent Drippy Jr. Uh, you can log in to uh, mdblabel.com. You know, we got the clean uh, tea, got it in turquoise. I ain't even iron it. You're me. It, it's player enough and the material is thick enough. It's a heavyweight tea. I ain't even iron it. I just threw it on. And it's the color. It's a nice, simple piece. This is what you wear when you got a nice physique. You dig. You know, when you got a little bit of jewels to throw on the accented MDB label login boss up. Carrying on. Appreciate you saying Ari just dropped the link in the chat. With regards to Charleston, he's dressed up, which is good, especially for a guy like him. He's wearing a decent pair of uh, eyeglasses, presumably uh, prescription lens. Uh, and if you have anything in Charleston, 
case. He has a, I forget what you call a fake eye. You wouldn't call it a prosthetic eye, but you know what I mean? Um, it makes you, it, it takes attention away from that. And I think that's actually quite smart. It makes him look a lot more neat. So I think he actually looks good. Now, granted, it's super black. You're wearing a Gucci tie with a Gucci print. Only black people or, you know, Chinese people would do something like this. This is extraordinarily tacky or maybe like a poor uh, you know, Latinos or maybe like some Persians would do something like this, but it's extraordinarily tacky. Uh, my advice, do not wear any outfit. I don't care who the designer is where they just put their print all over you. Uh, it just reeks of, hey, look at me. I can afford this. It's probably fake anyways, but all the same, it, it, there's no taste. You know, taste is when you buy something for style, you wear it for style, but all the same. Uh, my last public announcement before we carry on to black people and a couple of Latinos. Um, if you are wearing a collared shirt, especially if you're wearing like a Euro collar or a dress shirt, uh, do not put a chain on. Okay. You can't wear a chain with everything. I mean, damn, you cannot wear a chain with everything. This man looks like a goddamn Macy's employee. Um, you know, the one near the perfume section, he's not selling perfume, but he's positioned near it. Um, he looks like a goddamn Macy's employee and decided to put that tacky ass chain on top of it. Highly disappointing. Uh, super, super black in a bad way. Carrying on. Let's hear what the gentleman has to say. We have an interview with him currently rolling. So we're going to have two interviews going at once. Uh, for game, we got the down. Tim, look over. They let me look behind the curtain. Stop like they were 65 plus. You were, um, we thought you were paid to be there. We didn't know. We didn't, you know. Okay. So the introduction here is that he's saying, um, Hey, Charleston, we know you were in Las Vegas. We thought that you were being paid to be there. You know, what was going on? Tell us about that experience. And Charleston is about to recount his experience with uh, Aiden Ross. And again, I'm not familiar with him. I've seen him maybe twice when he's on videos collaborating with other persons. I don't play video games. I've never been on video game streaming websites. Even when I was a child, I didn't play video games. I say that to say, you know, if there's anything you all need to inform me of, feel free. You can send it in via Cash App or uh, PayPal if you feel like I need to know it or if there's a another video link or url or any contextual information you think is critical do let me know thank you for confirming the audio saying re one thing i want to note about charleston white which is typical of black folks or poor people or people who are inexperienced or not very bright or people who are provincial is that they have guesses on things that are not true and they they speak of it as though it's the truth you know he was you know say cheese says hey you know i see that you're dressed up today you know I like to see that. And he says, oh, yeah, I've been to the mountaintop and I've seen how the other side operates. I was around billionaires and there were no black people there, which, mind you, for those who grew up in poverty and that's really all they know, they like to say that as though that's like a badge of honor. This is the, the goofiness of a black person who maybe gets out of poverty. They say, like, oh, I live in an all white neighborhood. I live in an all Asian neighborhood. Like, That's nothing to be proud of, you fool. It's not pr uh, you shouldn't be proud of being isolated. You shouldn't be proud of being the only one there, you imbecile. You should be pleased to be well to do, but there's no real merit to being uh, apart from those who are like you. So that's actually quite silly and goofy. Um, but, you know, you can expect this kind of thing from uh, a Charleston White. And that's no disrespect to Charleston. I think that he's a, a meaningful figure. You know, he says some truth, um, but um, there's a reason that he has not been canceled. He's not been canceled because he's essentially comedy. He's not an organizer. He's never going to organize para, uh, paramilitary. He's never going to create a sophisticated structure. At the end of the day, he can't even, uh, you know, outsmart a 22-year-old uh, Jewish kid, right? 22 year, years old. I mean, he, he's almost three times the fella's age, but couldn't out, outsmart him. So he eventually gets used and abused for clout. Um, so, and it's an unfortunate experience because he actually was with his old lady while this happened, which, you know, makes it all the worse. Anyways, uh, by PayPal, Kendall writes, can't trust a man like Charleston White. Oh, I agree. He writes, peace to the saints. And then he has a, a YouTube short here. So let's take a look, see uh, what he's uh, referring to. And this is something we already knew. And in fact, I would go farther to state that you can't trust really any of these YouTube nerds, especially the ones who purport to be in the men's improvement space, because they're all, they're all phony. And much of what they do is to gain popularity and they will collaborate with persons whom uh, theoretically their philosophy is in direct contra contradiction to. You're teaching masculinity, but you're collaborating with Skittle guzzlers. You're teaching masculinity, but you're collaborating with people who are uh, letting their wife sleep with other men. 
Well, you're doing this for wealth and clout. That's why you can't trust any of them. And you can't trust anyone who's easily ruled by greed, affection, and fear, which is mostly what all these guys are ruled by. Any person in the manosphere you name, I can explain to you how they're fake and phony. Carrying on. This is the link that was sent. Maximize this. No, man, I ain't, I ain't going out of it. I did, man. I'm not on my. I'm, I'm just playing a character online, my nigga. I, I ain't really like to. I'm just playing a character online. Nah, man, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't nothing in my background, body and hateful, man. I'm telling you, nah, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't nothing in my. They trying to make me like, nah, man. They were, they were sexually harassing me. They try to get them two white girls. They try to get me to have sex with two white girls. They try to get me to have sex with two white girls. Offer me money and things. They say, give me $2,000. I'll take a picture of them two gay dudes. That's why I say, man, give me the $2,000, man. <laughs> I'll tell you, man, I don't know if I ain't got no money, man. I right, exactly. And when you're dealing with someone who says publicly, hey, I'm just playing a character for YouTube, no, I, I can't hate on anyone who's you know, trying to earn a dollar. I say that as a person who was born into poverty and had to claw their way out of poverty. So I never knock the hustle. You know, if you earn in a reasonable way, you know, I don't really have any, you know, any disrespect for you. But it's not quite proper that one should position themselves as a leader or a moral authority when really you're just using this as a cash grab which is something you, this is not new. You can observe this in your local church, in your local mosque. You can observe the same thing. How is it that we have mega churches where the, the pastor has more followers than Jesus did when he was walking the earth? Uh, how, how do you have uh, a Mufti Menk who uh, starting to say things that are completely against Islam um, and he's amassing a bigger following than the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him? Well, that's because they become sick with power. They become sick with wealth. They become sick with all of these things that human beings seek, attention, things like that. You can't trust any of them. You see them all running around to collaborate with one another so that they can share audience and gain audience. This is something you've not observed me doing. You, you've not seen me run around to collaborate with anyone and certainly not those uh, that I don't agree with. And you'll always be able to track this over time because I'm not seeking fame because uh, I prefer money over fame. That's just me personally. And I came into the game super solid. Big difference. Yeah, this guy's a character. Um, thank you for sharing that clip. Truly appreciate it. And thank you to those who support the work. May I also acknowledge Ginsley. He writes, tuition Charleston, black, looking like the stereotypical hood rich pastor, respectfully. It's true. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with culture, right? Some of the things that you might observe uh, in Charleston White visually or even within his speech, you might observe some of the same things in me, and that, that's the culture of the black American, and there's nothing wrong with culture, but some things are just terribly tacky, and when you see uh, the ball right here with this goddamn Gucci necktie from a, an Italian designer who probably does not feel like he wants Charleston White as his core audience and core consumer wearing a, a big rapper chain on top of it while trying to look professional, but also still looking like he's pushing a mixtape out of his trunk, you know, th this is kind of the lowest element of black culture. <clears throat> so explain the whole situation. Oh, uh, I was paid five thousand dollars to do an hour video. Uh, I guess the numbers on an hour video was so good. Uh, they kept wanting me to be back day after day after day after day. So. I didn't have an idea who Aiden Ross was until three day, three to four days ago, who he really was. Well, number one, I find this hard to believe because you know, there are those who run proper businesses and YouTube is something they do when they get time. Charleston White doesn't strike me as that person. And there are those who clearly don't have a major interest in, you know, like doing collabs and getting big. Charleston White is on everyone's platform. He is constantly collaborating. There, there's no accident that you know his name. He's making a great effort. He's doing it with ambition, and that's a beautiful thing. Uh, so it, it's not, you know, Aiden Ross is famous enough that you would have seen his face or heard his name. It's quite hard not to have. I uh, guess obviously a good team working for him. So I don't believe this. And this is the same thing that you see typically when, you know, 
people like DJ Fatta Dimmix, Livingston, or Cuck22, or the, the kid from Valuetainment. They try to mispronounce, mispronounce my name like they don't know it. It's like, well, you wouldn't say my name if you don't know my name. So why say it backward? It's a 50-50 chance that you get it right or you get it wrong. And 100% of the times they say it backwards, which is clearly intentional. So I, I don't trust any of the things that these people online say because they're so extraordinarily phony. Phony. The sad thing to me is that people fall for it. And that is why I often remind you, you know, hold yourself to a high standard. When I'm talking to you know my audience, this is the leadership class. These are people who are smarter than the average person. The average person falls for shenanigans. Oh, he's a 22-year-old white Jewish kid, homie. Nothing in my world is in the white people, especially not a white kid like that, who my kids them watch. You, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm all, so I don't How curious is that? I haven't heard of him, but my kids watch him. Okay, so you haven't heard of him, but your kids watch him, which would either suggest that your children didn't inform you or that you're not keeping an eye on what your kids are consuming, both of which are bad. And I would think that a guy like you, who clearly talks a lot, would have told his children, hey, I'm going to collaborate with this guy named Aiden Ross. I'm going to head out of town. They're like, oh, Aiden Ross, I know him. Then they would give you the rundown. So these things, I just don't find to be believable. But hey, uh, shout out to Darius. I think he came in with the first super chat. Did I miss any? Oh, no, I actually came in with the second one. Shout out to Darius. He writes, peace to the saints. Tuition, Charleston White had just left his friend's funeral before this interview, I see, and he made sure he threw that goddamn chain on, didn't he? Bro was wearing a chain at his pot the funeral. That's fantastic. Uh, man. And by the way, let Charleston know you usually wear black at funerals. Bro didn't have a black dress shirt. Good Lord. Oh, by the way, shout out to the ballers. Shout out to Brian. And Brian's been coming in consistently with the baller alerts. Good to see the prosperity. We always love to see our people win and get it carrying on. I don't know who he is. So when I do that, that, that and, and mind you, this is comedy too. You know, when people start repeating things constantly, it's like they're trying to convince you, right? Meaning that, uh, bro, we heard you say five times, I don't know who he is. Well, well I mean, damn, uh, you know, I, I didn't really believe you the first time. Now you didn't re restated it 30 times. It just makes it increasingly hard to believe. It seems like you're trying to convince yourself and us. Oh, yeah, by the way, shout out uh, manandwomanbrand.com. I just got my coasters in because you know I like to have a. Nice, cool, refreshing drink during these live sessions. So now I can set this on our our coaster, our coaster here, carrying on. Interview with him when he hang up with me with Bronny. I don't know who he is, but I know for the last four or five months, he been trying to get me to do a streaming podcast with him on on, a, on Discord. Now that's curious. So you say for the last four to five months, this guy's been trying to get you to stream with him and you don't know who he is. So four and four to five months pass by. You don't even check to see who he is. That that sounds completely unreasonable. He was a young white boy. So I thought it was one of them. I get a thing, but I'm paying attention to the type of questions he's asking me. He said, hey, do you like Jews? I heard you don't like Jews. I said, I don't like nobody. Jews, niggas, Asians, blacks, whites. Man. See, now this answer is a cop out. He said, do you like Jews? Now, who knows how he feels about Jewish people. But essentially, when you give an answer like this, you're trying your best to not answer the question, which is he's trying to figure out, do you have a specific disdain for this group of which I am a part of? And then Charleston goes on to say, I don't like anyone, Jews, whites, blacks, Latinos, Asians, horses, donkeys. And he essentially dodges and sidesteps the question. This is what we hate to see in our politicians, our leaders, which is when they're being duplicitous, um, they're equivocating, they're not answering directly. And so that's a, it, it lets you know that Charleston is reasonably clever, but not operating with integrity. And throughout this conversation, we're going to see that the lack of integrity is there. And in part, it's lack of integrity. And the other part is inexperience. And the other part is he just can't operate at that mental level because he doesn't have the training. It's not that he doesn't have the capacity. He doesn't have the experience. You know, he states many times that uh, he doesn't have anything to do with white people. Now, the white culture in America, now, these are fairly advanced people. And what I mean is, obviously, America has been on top for quite some time, you know, all of our lifetime. So these are of the most advanced people in the world. 
and I can say this as one who's traveled around the world and, and seen mankind, these are the most advanced people. So they're quite sophisticated and clever. So if you've grown up in black poverty, now you're dealing with someone who grew up in white, white affluence, they have a lot of mental tricks that you don't have. And we're about to see how he's picked apart and essentially controlled and dominated by a 22 year old effeminate uh, video game player. It get like that. Anyways, um, may I acknowledge, shout out to Saad, who got the uh, man and woman, excuse me, no, he got the assassin brand uh, headband. I actually got that one myself. A couple people got that one recently, actually. Shout out to Josiah. He writes, looking forward to our consultation tomorrow, as am I. It'll be a good one. We got a lot of progress to talk about in the tech business. And I also acknowledge CJ Bailey writes, tuition. Yes, indeed. Appreciate you all. And this is going to be a deep one. We're going to get cooking. We're going to find out what's what and who's who. Just worms, butterflies. Ants, nigga, I don't like nothing, nigga. Right. I done said fuck all that. Okay. That God, nigga, I don't sense. So he said, "Do you like gays?" I said, fuck "No, I hate gays. I'm a gay bashing ass nigga. We used to kick gays ass for no reason, mother. Yeah. So he said, "Why?" So we go on from about like that. So we go on to the brony conversation. He hang. Up. One thing I want you all to make a mental note of is number one. Aiden Ross didn't bring on Charleston White out of respect and say, I want to bring you on because I respect you. I, I want to bring you on because you're, an, you're a towering intellect. I want to bring you on because you're an extraordinary gentleman. No, I'd like to bring you on because I know that you're a controversial figure. You'll run up our numbers. You'll make me, Aiden Ross, you'll make me a lot of money, which I will not split with you. And you'll entertain my audience. You will entertain them but you will not gain any fans from my audience. Why? Because let's be real here. I'm a 22-year-old white kid, 22-year-old Jewish kid, however you like to call it, but you're like a 50-year-old black guy, old black guy from the South. My audience doesn't identify with you. My audience will not identify with you, but they will be engaged and entertained to see us interact. I'm the celebrity and they like to see celebrities out and about living their life, engaging in, you know, reality TV, however staged it might be. So in as much as that's the case, I'm using you to entertain, which is quite an old story in the context of American, the American drama, in the context of American media and the American reality, American politics. Yes, you use the black to entertain and to make money off of. Listen closely. He said Aiden offered me $5,000 to come and do an hour of recording. Listen closely. I repeat, Aiden offered him $5,000 to come and do one hour of recording. Now, as a businessman, if that's your job and you've come there to do a job for an hour for $5,000, then that should be the start and the end unless you have some greater clear goal that you believe you can achieve. Let's see if he was compensated a appropriately for his time. Let's see that he was thinking you know, strategically through this experience. Let's see if he was operating in the position of the older man, the more experienced, seasoned, more intelligent man, or did he get mentally defeated by a 22-year-old? Go. So they want me to come back the next day. They won't. They okay. So he said they want me to come back the next day. You were paid for one hour. $5,000. Okay, let's see. Said it was going to be a guy. I said, no, nah, man, I'm cool. I really didn't feel like it. Were they trying to pay you for that night too? No, that's what I was paying attention to. Now notice, he didn't voluntarily concede that Aiden basically tried to get him to provide his labor for free, which is to say to use him. See, if they're friends and they have a pre-existing relationship, then not necessarily usury, perhaps the favor will be returned. But when you don't know someone and they've showed up uh, for business purposes with a pre-agreed upon time that would be allocated and compensation, when you ask for additional time, you'd probably be paid at the same rate or perhaps more. But it seems at this point, Aiden asked for a favor or just for free labor. And Charleston White, you would note, did not voluntarily say, they asked me to come back again for free, although they'd be making a major cash grab utilizing my time, image, and likeness. 
Uh, he didn't mention that. The interviewer was sharp enough to ask. And this interviewer and Charleston White they are certainly buddy-buddy. And I don't think he's ever asked Charleston White any of the tough questions, which is fine. But, you know, you guys have to understand, interviewers, uh, reporters, journalists, they're supposed to be objective. They're supposed to ask the questions you really want to hear the answer to. But what we must understand is that it's all a business. It's all about money. These are not spiritual people. These are money-focused people, which means that at some point, they realize if I ask this subject the tough questions, then they will not come back for another interview. Hence, you'll always see the interviewers throwing the underhanded ball. Shout to Brad comes in supporting the work via Cash App. Truly appreciate you. Shout out to Marcos. I just copped a, a cool uh, tank at mdblabel.com. I actually got this one in the reverse colors. I also acknowledge, okay, cool, caught up there. And shout out to the one supporting the work. I appreciate you all. Hmm. So, but now it's going viral. And everybody calling me, saying, hey, man, he's the biggest motherfucking streamer in the world. He might be trying to get you a deal. So now, now I that's got quite curious for a couple reasons. Number one, you see, if he's the biggest streamer in the world, and I don't know if this is true or false, admittedly. But if he's the biggest streamer in the world, then how is it you had never heard of him, yet you agreed to show up in person and collaborate with him in a city outside of your own state? You travel quite a distance to be with this person whom you, you'd never heard of and you're not familiar with. Well, that doesn't even sound safe now, does it? That doesn't even sound safe on a basic level. That's number one. Number two, you're getting phone calls from your friends, presumably black folks who are of modest means probably folks who are not managers in the entertainment industry, not terribly sophisticated with regards to finance, structuring deals, not legal minds. And they're telling you, oh, they're hyping you up and gassing you up. But here's what I often remind you of. Take advice on brick making from brick makers. Take advice on money making from money makers. I surmise that the person's calling and being hyped up were more on the fan consumer side rather than the money maker hustler earner side. And here he is like a, a child, a, a youth getting hyped up. It's his emotions. And I remind you all often that, number one, untamed emotion is the enemy of performance. Untamed emotion is the enemy of, a, of performance. Got all the niggas who know about him pumping me up. Yeah, nigga. Yeah, the goat. Yeah, pumping me up. And I just, I'm blindly pumped up. There, there you go. He said, I'm blindly pumped up. Let me remind you, you may have heard this kind of a, a dynamic occur. You have the, uh, the, the Jewish owners in the music industry, the industry of black music, yes, rock and roll, R&B, jazz, hip hop music. So you have the Jewish owners, that term owner, maybe shall we say master. And you have the workers, the black artists, as they call themselves now, they used to call them slaves. Now they call them artists. You know, the rappers, the singers, the dancers, the entertainers like Charleston White. And, you know, the, the Jewish owners make the money because they're the business minds and the, the black laborers, they labor sometimes for free, sometimes at low cost. But they rarely recover much of the wealth that they've created through their talents. And I can't say that this is wrong. It just is what it is in as much as. You know, if they had the business skills, they wouldn't need the Jewish guys. Well, obviously, they don't have them, so they do need the Jewish guys. So they're going to lose their money accordingly. It just is what it is. But hey, consider this. If they didn't have the Jewish guys, how much money would they have? Probably even less than they have now, right? After being you know, cheated, as some black folks would call it. But hey, a deal's a deal. If you sign the contract, that's the deal you got into. I don't know nothing about those streaming, nigga. I'm a nigga on the internet talking. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, so now I don't know nothing about streaming, my nigga. So everybody calling me. They won't stop calling me. My son calling me. My friend that's a judge. His kid. So I'm saying, well, shit. I'm thinking purpose, right? I ain't thinking money. So he said, I'm thinking purpose. I'm not thinking money. Ah, I don't believe that. I think that's a lie. Number one, what is your purpose, Charleston? I, I don't know that you've ever told us your purpose while you're floating back and forth between these many personalities. I don't think you ever shared your purpose. I'd be deeply curious about that one. Uh, secondly, 
well, how is it you went out on a business trip and now all of a sudden you're thinking purpose? You know, purpose is something deeper, almost like a spiritual thing, right? The purpose of your life or the purpose of life. Uh, I thought you went there to get $5,000 for one hour of work. That's what I thought. Jabrizi writes, uh, Aiden Ross got paid $10 million from Kick, which I believe is the largest deal for a non-podcaster. There you go. Which is to say, he certainly had the money to pay uh, Charleston, didn't he? But when you don't view someone as valuable, you don't respect someone, you don't respect a man, oh, you treat them as such, right? You treat them as chattel. You treat them as property. You use them. And if the man is not wise, he submits himself to such kind of abuse. Shout to RS supporting the work. And for those of you uh, who don't have a dollar, you can even click the like. It's free, and it shows that you're thankful uh, to receive something for free. That's what I would do. I click the like when I would watch content that I like so I can uh, support the, the content creator. Honey, nigga, I'm saying between me and Say Cheese TV, outside of Disney and Nickelodeon, we have the largest urban youth audience in America. That's a fact. I tap into this white boy. I get to tap into the youth of the world. He yeah. like Disney. For real. So I'm not thinking money. I'm thinking about all these young people, minds and hearts that I can come play uncle and have access to. Now, here's the danger. And for those of you who are intelligent, you, you tend to ask questions. You ask smart questions, which is okay. That's fine. You'd like to tap into the minds of the youth around the world. But what is your philosophy? What is your message? What is your outcome? What, what are you actually here to teach? You're known as a hate preacher. I don't believe he is a hate preacher, but you're known as a hate preacher. You tend to say things without significant thought. You don't have any discernible philosophy. Uh, you have no organization to, to mention. So, so what do you want their minds and hearts for other than to draw a dollar? You see, because the average person is a non-thinker, they did not get proper education and probably are of modest intelligence. You, you listen to a Charleston White or anyone else, these preachers, these salesmen, these sophists, these fake philosophers, and, and you think that they want to help you. And here's the worst thing. A lot of folks are sitting at home and they need help and they want help, but they're going seeking help from people who themselves need help. Let me repeat that. Pay attention. You sit at home seeking help from people who themselves need help. That is a, that's the sad reality of things. Right. So it's everybody in my ear saying money, 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 money. I'm thinking relationship, 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 relationship. <laughs> okay, now let me tell you how you know that Charleston is not as sharp as we would like him to be. First off, he's lying. He said everyone's in my ear saying money, money, money. I'm thinking relationship, relationship, relationship. No, 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 no. They're saying money, money, money. You are thinking money, money, money. Full stop. That's number one. Number two, you have stated that you're thinking relationship. Well, let us be real. What is the likelihood that Charleston White, the old black dude from the hood, looks like he should be standing in front of any of our liquor stores, right? Your local liquor store. He's standing in front with a, with a brew and a can and a brown paper bag. Bag is twisted up a little bit. Might ask you for change on your way out. Yeah, he looked just like that guy. Sound just like him too. So you're the old black dude who's standing in front of someone's liquor store, and then the 22-year-old multimillionaire Jewish kid, uh, white kid, is supposed to be friends with you? Like you're thinking relationship? You think you're actually going to build a, a real bond? You guys are going to text each other like buddies? Stop it. Stop it. Are you that foolish? Do you have a, such a lack of experience to, to not see when someone is trying to use you? Have you grown all those years and not become wise? You think that young 22-year-old Jewish millionaire kid views you as a buddy, as a friend? Y'all gonna go kick it when the cameras are off and he's not making money off of your image and likeness? Cameras are all off. We're on our leisure time. Y'all gonna just be chilling? Is that what you think? Because that's what relationships suggest. That's what it suggests. Come on, man. You foolish. He doesn't even respect you as a human being. He doesn't even respect you as a human being. Shout out to uh, Paul T. supporting the word. Truly appreciate it. Shout out to the real ones. He writes, peace of saints, tuition for this elite game in a real way. And mind you, I'm a capitalist as well. There's nothing wrong with money. Absolutely. 
And in fact, I think that those who are like alike in mind, who share values, this is not a racial thing. This is a, a values, a mindset thing. Those who share values, we should live among one another. We should spend among one another. We should all become prosperous. I absolutely believe in making a dollar. Been doing that since I was a young boy. But I don't make dollars off of lies. I make dollars off of good products and services. And my dream is that I will wake up one day, go through the entire day, and every product that I use will be made either by me or by you. That's why I have another lovely coaster, you dig, to set my, my drink on. I used to have coasters that were made by uh, Pottery Barn. I have my own coasters because I don't know the people at Pottery Barn. You dig? Because God is in the relationship, my nigga. God. The relationships is last. So everybody else saying money, 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 money. I ain't thinking money. But one of his managers is. OK, so the reason that he's emphasizing this is such that he can defend himself from being exploited. Aiden's thinking money, money, money. Every time you see him, the cameras are rolling. He's getting content. And guess what? He's getting money, money, money. Every time you show up and Aiden's cameras are rolling, you're not getting money. You're just expending energy, time, labor, and taking costs to your relation, uh, your reputation. Uh, not only among those who would watch you online, but also uh, in front of your old lady because his, his woman was with him. So Aiden's thinking money. Why aren't you thinking money? You ain't learned. Furthermore, he's saying that he's thinking relationship because on the first day he got paid. On the second day, he didn't get paid. So he needs the backstory of I was thinking relationship to explain away why he didn't get paid, why he got used, abused, and exploited, which I said is a common thing that the black folk in America have been suffering. And you can't call anybody else wicked or evil. You can just call yourself stupid because you did it voluntarily. Last I heard, ain't nobody cracked the whip on you. Hmm. Texan or... Uh Aiden wants to give you a deal. I think he wants to give you a deal. In my mind, they lying. Now, I think everybody bullshit. Now, that, again, you've just contradicted yourself. He said, I'm thinking relationship. Well, what's the purpose of relationship? To drive money, right? Profitability, business deals. And you said that the manager texted you, and you're saying he wants to offer a deal, and you don't believe him. Well, if you don't believe him, why'd you show up? If you don't believe him, why'd you give him your time and energy? Uh, why'd you even do the business deal? And then why the next day did you let them exploit you with no business involved, just them making money and you getting screwed for it? If you didn't believe them, why are you even there? It don't make sense. And I have to break this down because so few people are actually processing and have enough experience to really understand what's going on. And this is actually a sad thing. I would love to see our heroes, the people that we esteem, whether we esteem them because they're black like us or we esteem them because they come from the same economic situation, we admire them in the sense of a celebrity. I hate to see them fall. But sometimes when you see someone fall, even if it's a giant fall, and we need to understand, well, what tripped them up such that we can avoid that pothole? This boy and tripped and fell his whole damn body into the pothole. If you want to give me a deal, show me. Don't tell How me. How big of a deal are we talking? They ain't saying no number. That's why I'm saying they bullshitting. Well, here's the thing, my dear boy, if you knew they were BS and can somebody tell me why is it that you did not stop participating or make them show you the contract or show you the money? You feel me? I mean, that, that's all it is. That's all there is to it. You see what this reminds me of? This reminds me of a guy getting used by a woman. Yes, it reminds me of a guy getting used by a woman. A lot of people seek my counsel. You can get a consultation at Marquetism.com. This is a good time because I'm going to be leaving the country soon. And They'll say, hey, I'm dealing with this girl. You know, this is a situation I'm trying to smash, but she's every time I want to smash, she's doing this. I'm like, okay, well, what have you, how have you spent time? You know, oh, you know, we went here, we did this, we, we experienced this, we flew out here, we went on this vacation. I'm like, whoa, my boy. So you're spending money, you're investing your time, you're giving your energy. What, what'd you, what have you gotten in advance? Does she pay for anything? Has she paid any check? Oh, okay. So where's the balance? Where, where's the reciprocity? I was like, well, why don't you just ask her? Why don't you just tell her? Why don't you give her a deadline? Why don't you say, hey, look, I've had a great time with you, but I am a man. And you heard me? If you ain't trying to get beat down by the end of the week, you heard me? Uh, look, you got to kick rocks because uh, I do have needs. You know, yeah, go ahead. Throw that, that deadline on her. It might be Monday and you kicking it with her Monday. Say, hey, if it don't get beat down by Friday, I ain't pressing it today. You, you know, I might see you a couple times during this week, but if it don't happen by Friday, you got to go. Oh, I can't do that. Why? You don't want to know the truth? You don't want to know the truth. That's why. You see, the reason you won't tell her that, and I just told him to tell her this just to see how he reacts. I told you to tell her that because I know that you don't want to know the truth. 
See, because here's the thing. You already know the truth. You know that girl don't like you. You know that girl is there for the money. You know she ain't about to give you them draws. She just there for a free ride and a fancy car. Same thing with uh with dude right here. He knew that the 22-year-old white Jewish kid does not really mess with him, is not going to become his friend, and is just using him and does not really have a deal. But he's playing dumb because he thinks he can get some benefit or maybe he might be able to pull this off. He doesn't want to upset his master. So he's going to be nice to Massa. He's not going to press him. Now, if I were in Charleston's position and he says there's a deal, I say, oh, fantastic. Send that contract over. You can send it to legal at marquettism.com. Yeah, once it goes there, it'll go to me and my team. We'll, we'll take a look at it. We'll get it right back to you. Oh, no, we don't have a contract. Well, you mentioned deal. Well, what kind of deal are, do you have in mind? Right? Like, let's talk about that. Let's talk about that. Oh, well, we, we need to figure it out. Oh, fantastic. Great. Well, you know, when you figure it out, let me know. And then, you know, I'll, I'll review the deal. If it's a good deal, you know, we'll get it executed. We'll send it back over. And, and maybe we'll, I'll catch a bird over your way or I'll fly you over my way and we'll celebrate. Done. You see, I can do that because I have other things going on. I have other interesting, meaningful things going on in life. It's kind of the same thing with women or a great metaphor, which is to say that when you have more than one woman, if one of them want to jump ship, hey, <laughs> yo, let Shorty jump ship. If she can't swim, she bound to drown anyways. You heard me? And I ain't going to save her. I ain't Captain save a hoe. Yeah, let her hop in that water. It's cold out there. It was warm on this luxury liner. You heard me? Yeah, she want to hop off the yacht. She could do that. It doesn't matter because I got other ones. Yeah, hey, pull Shorty off the bench. But this ball is clearly believing that he's uh, about to get access to something greater through this 22-year-old Jewish kid. And the reason I want you guys to remember this is because of the following. This is the same process that you observe over the decades of the black American from the lumpen classes that they, they rely on the white man to give them access to the greater world, to take them to greater things, which is to say, you know, the rapper, they want a deal. Oh man, I need to get a deal. Why? Do you really? Why don't you make the deal yourself? Oh, I need to get so-and-so. I need to get a job from so-and-so. I need to get hired by so-and-so. Really? Why don't you just start a business yourself? Oh, you don't want to work hard. You don't want to learn. That's why it's easier. You go to daddy. You go to Massa. Let him help you out. You see, Charleston, he's done all of these things, and now he's saying, let me go to a kid to learn. To, to learn. <laughs> let me go to someone 40 years my junior to learn. Funny. I guess funny is not the word. Pathetic. And they texting. So I'm from a world where motherfuckers call and talk deals. So I'm really not taking none of it serious. Plus, See, that doesn't make sense. Is how I know he doesn't do business. And this is how I know he's never uh, been sued as a business person. He's never been sued. And he's never had to put forward a big legal case, like a legitimate case. And the reason I say that is the first thing my attorney always says is, okay, send me all the documentation phone calls is, is difficult to send that as documentation because generally we don't record phone calls but text messages are great pieces of evidence emails are great pieces of evidence it's documentation you can go back and reference it especially when you're doing business deals you know people might have different memories of things and they often do because when you're dealing with two sides of the table and each person wants their own outcome people tend to imagine that you said things you didn't say or because their mind is clouded with what they want uh, so yeah, I'd prefer if I'm doing a business deal, talk on the phone or text message. I prefer you text. Really, it should be on email because text is an interpersonal thing. It's a more of a social casual thing. I prefer it email. So if it was me, I'd say, hey man, send this to legal at marquettism.com. Yeah, we'll take a look at it, get it back to you. I prefer it. If he, as Charleston said, text or phone call. No, I prefer text. I want to see the terms of the deal in black and white. We can go back and forth point by point. Talking. <coughs> Talking, what's that really do? Nothing. That's when it's fake. Anyway, shout out to Mr. Tabby. He writes, Peace of the Saints. Thank you for taking the time to give this lecture. Absolutely. I appreciate you appreciating my time. Thank you to the, the real men who stand up, pay what you owe. That's one of the things I learned early in life as a man, as a male. You read that in my book, The Black Box. You can get a copy at Amazon.com. And it seems like a lot of people need one. You heard me? Um, one of the greatest lessons is pay what you owe. That's critical for a man. Nothing is free. And anytime you get confused into thinking something is free, ooh, you're in for a rude awakening. Seems you're in for a very rude awakening. Even the free labor that Aiden Ross pimped out of Charleston White, 
That wasn't free. Aiden had to put some time into that. He had to put some thought into that. You hear me? He had to treat him the same way you treat a, a, a Instagram thought when you fl when she get flew out. You hear me? You know, give her a little bit of food. Uh, you know, set her up at a nice hotel. Take her to a restaurant she can never go to. You know, and then smash. You hear me? <laughs> and then smash. But you you don't ever actually pay her. You don't actually give her anything really. Yeah. He whined and dined him like a hoe. The young white boy. So the third day. I'm trying to build a relationship in my mind. Hey, um, now we nephew and um. Hey, um, get on. I think he said there's going to be a dude on her or something. And I was somewhat tired. That's why I was. This is so rich. This is so rich. I mean, <laughs> this is rich. He said, hey, unk. Okay, so uncle, this is a term relating to family relations. Uncle. Okay, you guys are in two different racial categories. He's in the white category. You're in the black category. Okay, so. Uh, you guys have come from radically different ethnic backgrounds, radically different racial backgrounds, radically different income strata. You guys are actually from different uh, regions of the United States. What do you actually have in common? So he's he's fooling you, my my dear boy, which is to say that, and this happens all the time in business, you know, and this happens all the time in male female relations. You know, the smarter person who might also be manipulative, they use terms of endearment to make you feel as though they like you or respect you. And they're just what's called buttering you up. Yes, they are. Um, there, there's a word for this. It's escaping me at the moment. But they're basically giving you false compliments such that you feel like you can trust them or you feel like they like you. They wouldn't do you wrong when absolutely that's actually their very goal is to do you wrong. And this is all a part of that process, which is why I often distrust those who come with excessive compliments. You know, however fresh I may be, I, I know that I'm not so fresh that a grown man needs to keep on telling me, you dig? It makes me suspicious. And as you can even hear in classic films, they say, you know, your your friend, uh, your killers come as friends wearing smiles. You dig? Laying down on up uh, with the motherfucker. So in my mind, I don't know this. Or I'm thinking this is one of that new shit. That artificial intelligence shit where you can blow a motherfucking head up, make their neck. I'm thinking they done made a Goonies character with that, with the, with the. So he's basically describing how um, he was on a live with Aiden and Aiden invited on a, a, a male impersonating a female. Um, I've not seen this. If uh, anyone thinks I need to pull this up, feel free to uh, send in the link via uh, Cash App or uh, the PayPal email address below. And um, yeah. You yeah, haven't seen it. Can't say I terribly want to see it, but if you feel like it's uh, worth uh, pulling up, it shall be done. With the filters. So if you see me, I raise up like, man, what y'all, you playing with me? God damn, it's that white boy shit. Technology shit. So they said, no, that's a real person. <laughs> that was some old black people shit right there. He said, this is that white boy shit. <laughs> this is that technology shit. <laughs> Yo, uh, a shout out to to humorous racism. You dig? Um, it, it's that racism that, like, really, you know, you, you didn't even say it with any hatred. You're me. You you meant it, but you didn't say it with hatred, and you don't even feel it's wrong. <laughs> it's that white boy shit. It's that technology shit. That's definitely some old black people shit to say right there. It, it's not even racist when they say it. I'm sure white folks have some things like that that they say. <laughs> They don't even mean anything racist. You hear me? Uh, shout out to Cisto. He sends intuition by a cash app. Shout out to Matthew with the baller alert. He writes, Peace and Saints tuition as always. Glad to catch you live. Truly appreciate that. Shout out to Matthew, a real one. Shout out to the bosses. Man, I raised up. I said, well, let me fix the Wi-Fi. Oh, uh, man, when I realized that was a real person, my mind saying, what is that? What is that? That's a it. So I said, man, is that a man or a woman? Oh, I'm a transgender. That's why I say, stand up. Let me see how this bad built motherfucker, this motherfucker too wide in the camera, too close up on the camera. That's how big holes take pictures. Bag lying. up. You ain't lying. You too motherfucking wide to be this motherfucker. Oh, that's why, that's how you can tell fat hole. Now he, he right about that. That's correct. Now, for those of you who um, have low IQ and you're like, oh, why is he pausing the video? It's because of uh, copyright. You know, I want to respect the fact that this is not my content and YouTube will automatically flag the video. It's demonic. Step back, bitch. Let a nigga see.
<laughs> so hey, we got so, so hey, 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 hey. And one thing I want you all to ask yourself, which is if Aiden Ross brought you on for any good reason, why is it that he knows that you don't like the sexual deviants? I don't use the term LGBTQ because that's the term that they created to make it sound good, you know, like make it sound harmless. Euphemism is what it is. If you don't like the sexual deviance, and, and this is well documented, why is it that Aiden Ross would bring you on and then put you on an interview, you and a sexual deviant, just almost as an experiment to see what you're going to do, basically setting you up to say something that's hateful to further cast you into you know, oblivion and be marginalized and eventually canceled or to set you up to make you uncomfortable? I mean, where's the growth? Can there be any progress there? It's really just a waste of your time, but it's a great use of his time because it's going to draw in the views through the virality of the drama. But you walked into that situation willingly. That is something that you'd have to ask yourself as a man, especially when you walked into that situation. You know, you're being a clown participating in the circus, but you're not even getting paid. Even the clowns in the circus get paid. You're doing this for free at this point. Dude, but me and you ain't the kind of nigga that roll in with big women. <laughs> You lying motherfucker. Uh, that pussy ain't got no face. Shout out to him. I'm from everybody get talked about. The, the first day is questioning me about hate. So, okay, he see I'm not hateful. He see that I don't hate Jews. I want you to pay attention to that one right there. You see, my good fortune is that I've always been in the power position as far as social dynamics go, maybe except for like, one year in like kindergarten or first grade when I was in an all white school, black kid just showed up. I'm the only black kid in an all white school while my mother was uh, recovering from serious drug addiction. But pretty much 98% of my life, I've been in the power position. One thing I observe in people who are not in the power position is that they tend to cower to power. They want to prove themselves. And you'll even notice with your women, if a woman likes you, she wants to prove herself. She wants to show you that, oh, I'm submissive, I'm feminine, I'm this, I'm that. And here he is talking like a broad. Oh, I showed him that I'm not hateful. I showed him that I don't hate Jews. I showed him that I'm this. And it's like, well, you're 60 something. He's 22. Like, who is he for you to be making demonstrations to get his approval? It's quite backward, don't you think? Well, why don't you like King Vaughn? I say because King Vaughn is classified as a serial killer, according to the FBI. Crime reports. He killed black people. Why do you like him? You're a Jewish kid. Oh, I like King Vaughn. Well, I met some of his victims, talked to some of the victims' people. I met Tuka's mother. Why don't you come over here? See, like, this is not interesting. I think he really, like, feels like this is his strong area when he's, like, talking to the families of people who have been killed. I really don't think it's relevant. Um, but you know, I think he really feels like this is his his bread and butter. So he often comes back to this. We do have a minimum of uh, $10 and above to have your comment read. Uh, this one actually I think is interesting. So I'll make a, an exception here and let this be the last one. Uh, he says, have I ever considered doing an episode? Um, I'm supposing maybe a, a short video uh, reviewing uh, up and coming SoundCloud or Spotify artists could be fun and informative. It, it could be hilarious and informative. Um, so that, that could be something to try. Actually, I think that, this is quite funny. Because people out there be thinking they got bars and they be straight garbage. <laughs> That'd be funny as hell. You dig? Um, so I, I might be down for that. Uh, we really want to think about how we could do it. Um, the key is that every we know every you know wannabe rapper, of which there's an infinite number, will want to send in their content or their songs to to get some some clout. And so we'd obviously have to limit that and find a way. Usually money is a great way to limit things and make sure people are serious. So maybe if we um, did a review of upcoming rappers and they can, uh, for $15, send a song and we'll give it a, say, 20 second play. And if it's fire, you know, we will carry on. But if it's in garbage, we just going to stop it at that 20 seconds, roast the hell out of them and go on to the next one. I think that's a, a, a good idea, actually. And I thank you for sharing that. It sounds quite funny um, and, and could really be cool, because one thing I, I do like to do is I do like to support people who are ambitious and talented and are going to win. So that could be a, a neat way to do that. So I appreciate you sharing that. Shout out to Major Mind and Soul. He writes, I showed him I'm not hateful. 
Yeah, let me reread that quote I showed him. I'm not hateful, end quote. That's from Charleston. He writes, you should have shown him you're a strong man not to be messed with. Mr. White needs the ism. Oh, definitely he needs the ism. And you know what? I wouldn't be surprised if he actually is soaking the ism. He's probably one of my biggest fans. And truth be told, I'm your favorite YouTuber's favorite YouTuber. You dig? Uh, shout out to Fooly Cooley. He writes, Peace of the Saints. I thought he said he hated everybody. Yeah, yes, he did. At the very beginning, he specifically said he hated everyone and went as far as to be hyperbolic and name black people within the group of folks he hates. He named animals, butterflies in particular. And so, yes, you're right. And so he made a total 360 from that initial claim. And this is very typical of people who really don't live by any true philosophy or way. Uh, they just obey wherever the dollar would take them. We get past that, okay, unks don't hate Jews. I told him I've never even met a Jew. I don't even know what a Jew look like. Nigga, we don't see Jews down south. Facts. We don't know what a Jewish person, nigga, we don't, I don't know. Nigga, I just started hearing the word Jew three years. Now, this is a very important piece to think about because there's a lot of truth here. And the reason that he's not really heard the term Jew is because you're not going to encounter certain persons or certain power structures when you're in poverty. And he said, just in the last couple of years, I've heard the word Jew. Well, that makes sense because you've been broke except for the last couple of years. So now you've got a little bit of coin. Now you're being introduced to uh, the power structures of the planet Earth. And so now you're encountering Jewish people similarly, except I mean, it's only similar in that it's when I got out of poverty, but I got a power really way quicker than him. Um, when I went to university, which was early because I finished high school at 16, when I was in university, that's when I first started uh, being around Jewish kids. And that's because they're hardworking, uh, studious, and accomplished. And that's why they went to an elite school. I, too, had the same merits. I also went to an elite school, and that's how we you know, made uh, one another's acquaintance. To this day, I have a lot of good friends who are Jewish male and female, most of which are uh, culturally Jewish, as they like to call it, which is to say that they're not religious. The religious Jews really don't even want to talk to non-Jews. They, they do think that you are beneath them. That is factual. Anyone who claims otherwise is frankly lying. Um, anyways, the point is this. Yeah, you're just now meeting them because you've been broke your whole life. Um, but now that you are meeting them, you're going to meet them and encounter other things. And one thing I'd like to warn you all about is that you, know, you really don't understand the limits of your freedom until you get wealth, because up until then, you've not even tried to do things that the government fears or is worried about, right? Like, for example, every time you fly into a new country, you have to fill out this form if you're flying commercial. You have to fill out this form that says you're not taking more than $10,000 in currency out of the country. Well, most of you don't even have $10,000 of currency in the country. You are me, so you're damn sure ain't taking it out of the country. But you should ask yourself if the currency, just like my luggage, is my own property, why does the government need to be aware of where I'm taking it or what I'm doing with it? Why? You see, that's a limit on your freedom, but you wouldn't ever know that until you get a certain amount of money. The government is greatly limiting us, and only those who have the power of money will ever find out. Um, there are a number of other things that I could speak to that I won't speak to publicly that you know, has shown me that the government is certainly trying to keep control of all of us, particularly those of us who have liquidity. And their first effort when you come into direct open conflict with them is to bleed you of your liquidity. You observe Donald Trump right now going through these legal matters. If you've ever hired an attorney, you know that is extremely expensive. And the worst thing about it is the government makes it take a long time. So not only is it truly expensive. The time that it takes makes it even more expensive. And here's what the government has over you. Time. You're one person. They got time. They got an infinite team and they have an infinite budget because they're spending the money they stole from taxpayers and they're willing to spend that on anything. I mean, just, just imagine they can't give, forgive your student loans, but they can pay for the war in Ukraine. The Ukrainians have never paid taxes, but you have, and generations and generations back have also paid taxes, but the children of those people who've been paying taxes for generations will have no benefit from it. They'd rather give it to Ukrainians. Give me a break. Carrying on. Two years ago. Growing up as a kid, I never heard that word. So I got some old people that's in their 70s saying that that Bible is not for us, that God and Jesus is not for us. He for the Jew. He ain't for black. Well, that's a strange interpretation because my reading of the Bible is that uh, Jesus was of Jewish uh, origin and he was also killed by those of Jewish origin. So you know, his and his reading doesn't seem to be quite in line with you know, what is popular, but it sounds like he didn't read it. He's heard it from some other people, which is the true mark of one who is not very wise. 
Moreover, uh, may I acknowledge Kareem comes in by a cash app. He writes, why aren't you on Rumble? I do have a Rumble account. I just haven't used it much. And, you know, truth be told, can you even really say I'm on YouTube? And as much as, you know, if you look at your favorite YouTubers, like, you know, the top YouTubers, I mean, they go live two, three times a day. I go live when I have time. You know, what I really spend most of my time on is when I'm talking to guys like you uh, in consultations, when I'm organizing the Lady Saints, when I'm building infrastructure. Um, that's really what I'm investing my time on is the organizational side of things, not not being a streamer. That to me is not uh, anything that uh, I find to be terribly exciting. I do have a Rumble account. You know, I may get around to adding more content uh, as it's appropriate, but you have to realize that when you leave YouTube and you go on to Rumble, you're duplicating the same problem is just at a you know perhaps less menacing which is to say that you're still on someone else's platform at the end of the day <laughs> carry on thank you for that question shout out to nicaragua he writes i like that soundcloud idea yeah indeed it sounds like it could be interesting shout out to mark uh mark pando came in and brud sent me the cold as beat last night you heard me <laughs> so you know when we, when we get this album out it is going to be a it's going to be a saint and center pando album it's going to be crazy Shout to Key. He writes, react, St. Key in the chat. Um, did you put something in the chat? If you did, St. Key, uh, go ahead and repost that. He was a Jew. We ain't no motherfucking Jew. <laughs> Straight up nigga mistreated slave babies and seeds. We are not descendants of Africans. We are slave descendants, nigga. Them people had. See, when you, the funny thing is, when you observe someone speak with passion <laughs> because they're so serious about what they're saying, you sometimes think that it's true because they're, they're so serious. You're like, how could he be that serious while lying? How could he be that serious while making up things? The ball is serious as hell. But in reality, when you say something like we're not descendants of Africans, I mean, <laughs> this makes no sense. That's as nonsensical as saying that whites are not the descendants of Europeans, right? That's how silly that is. <laughs> I can't even take this seriously. It's like you're listening to the drunk ball in front of the, the liquor store yelling on YouTube. I mean, goddamn. I remember back in the day I was in the homie trap house many years ago. You heard me. I'm in a, tra a homie trap house. He whipping up some wax. And, uh, you know, we just all kicking it politic and I ain't been in the hood in a minute. Right. And the homie who will remain nameless. Um, he, and this is look, this is how long this was how long ago this was. I didn't even have Instagram. I had heard of it, but I didn't have it. I'd never used it. And the homie said, he's like, he's like, blood, obviously we in my neighborhood, like blood, blood, these bitches, blood on, on mama's Instagram to save a lot of these hoes life. And I was wondering what he meant. And then once I you know, got on Instagram and start to observe the way Instagram was turning into soft core porno, I realized that it's true. A lot of these thoughts, if they didn't have Instagram, they, they really would have no meaning they they probably have to just behave and be normal women right but instead they're able to go online and fleece these suckers but the point is similarly instagram and youtube have saved the hoes life has also saved these uh your local neighborhood crackheads life because now he can say the crazy things he says in front of a liquor store on youtube and then uh you know people are entertained because they don't know any better you heard me like we know better you heard me like we going to jj's liquor store you feel me the homies going in there to get a black and mild you see bro outside you might throw him a dollar or something you've seen charleston before so you see him on the internet you're not like oh man that dude's deep you're like bro i could have sworn i saw your ass in front of rj's liquor store you feel me so it's not a thing to us we just look at him like bro you you's a real you's a real nut man you over here twisted off the old english man i don't believe a damn thing he said he just said we're the descendants of slaves, not the descendants of Africans. Well, that's as true as saying whites in America are not the descendants of Europeans. It's just silliness. In fact, we actually are the descendants of Africans. That's why we are black. We fit in the Negroid category racially. Africa is a continent. That is where our blood and our ancestors come from. This is just silly. Look how pumped he is while he's lying. <laughs> and no name. No religion, no documentation on what God they believed in. They they wore and, and, and bore a spirit. The fuck are you talking about? They had the kind of spirit where they can be mistreated and they wouldn't even come in and sneak in the house and do nothing wrong to you. They turn the other cheek. What, what is the boy talking about? <laughs> Boy, talking about right now. Mike Check Productions writes, I have beats on YouTube and SoundCloud that I would love for you to review or use Mike Check Productions. Okay, now I, I do want to let everybody know. I've been sent a number of beats in my day. 
Um, some of them are not raw. By some of them, I mean the majority of them are not raw, which is to say that um, we're going to keep it funky. Now, if you consider yourself a fan, you, you might not want to send the beats, you hear me? Because if it ain't slap, it's not a slapper. I'm going to have to say it's not a slapper. If it is a slapper, you hear me? I might drop some bars on the spot. But yeah, maybe we could do rappers and, and producers too. That'd be cool. That'd bring in a an additional aspect to it. That could be really neat. And y'all know I love music in general. I, I definitely love hip hop music. So I'll make a note of that here. That'd be cool. That'd be really neat. Oh, and by the way, if you do send beats, you have to make sure that they're not copyrighted already. That, um, yeah, pretty much that they're not copyrighted. We don't, we don't want the channel flagged while we're trying to play you a song that you sent us. Nigga, they humbleness, they dignity, they integrity, they tenacity. <laughs> Got us here, nigga. Not fighting back. All right, let me summarize what bro was trying to say. <laughs> They're going to be an interpreter for this N-word right here. You dig? He's basically saying, look, your ancestors were suckers. You are me? The ones who made it over here as enslaved Africans, they were suckers. Uh, they were uh, basically um, allowing the whites to enslave them, which goes back to the Kanye West statement of slavery was a choice, which is actually factual. Because when you consider the fact that there were a number of black Africans that didn't make it across the sea, not because they died in transport, and many did die in transport, but many of them jumped overboard as if to say, I'd rather die than be enslaved or I'd rather die than be under your control. You also have those that never were able to be successfully taken off of the continent. Uh, and then also you have those that were never enslaved, right? You dig? Which is to say the vast majority of those who were brought here were the ones that were in all likelihood more docile. And then when you were able to breed, you find that um, you're, you're birthing children whose parents were enslaved and such such being the case, they learned the slave mentality from their parents, which is why even today the ism is so critical because I can teach you things that your parents could never teach you. And in fact, your parents have taught you quite the opposite because your parents live based on fear. Your parents live with various form of slave mentality. And that's whether you're white, black, Latino, or otherwise. To be a brave person is actually quite a rare thing. It is inhuman, more godly. You have to be taught that. You should also think twice about you know most religions uh, the major monotheistic religions, they say to fear God. Fear is a powerful thing. What happens when you don't fear? And also ask yourself, who has been trying to become God of you? Who have you been taught to fear as though they are God? Many lessons in this one. And thank you to those who support the work. Carrying on. Loving the motherfucker that still mistreated you. Is we sick today, master? Is we house burning, master? And shout out to the ignorant masses because when he says these things, he says them as though he thought of these ideas or these concepts. And those of us who are educated and informed, in my case, I can clearly see that he's directly, not directly, but he's, uh, he's basically uh, mishandling a quotation of Malcolm X. When Malcolm X gave a, a speech and pointed out how the black slave would identify so deeply with their master, even though the master owned the house, owned the plantation, got all the money, and the slave just worked there, you know, he says, Is we sick, massa? And he said, If the house was on fire, the slave would say, Oh, our, our house is on fire, massa. And he would hurry to put out the fire quicker than the slave would hurry to put out the fire. He said, That's a house Negro mentality. But the field Negro, which is to say the dark one that was cast out in the fields and lived in shacks and didn't identify as closely with the slave master when he saw the house was on fire, he didn't go to help put out the fire. He was hoping for a strong wind so that the fire would increase and the house would be burned down. And right now you just hear the broken version of this uh, anecdote that Malcolm X gave and Charleston White is basically butchering it and passing it off as his own thinking when those who are informed know better. And this is what you have today. You have those who are not thinkers uh, positioning themselves as such. And it's quite comical when you, for example, I just mentioned that he uh, basically took a Malcolm X quote and we look at his eyewear. And this is the Sharon Rancière uh, eyeglass, uh, which is essentially a style that Malcolm X popularized, but it was common in that era. And these usually come in black and he's wearing the actual pair of glasses you know, from that era that Malcolm X popularized. 
So we see who he's learning from. And you guys have probably heard me in previous streams. You know, Malcolm X is just a student. The master was the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. Uh, but, you know, that's another discussion. Is we dying, master? Still love that motherfucker, homie? That's what got us here. Shut, shut, this shut, new group ain't got no PayPal. love. But they in that book. Holly, we Israelites. Homie, them people had a spirit, nigga. That withstood slavery. We ain't got no book that can help us stand nothing. I don't know what Brian's talking about, but anyway, shout out to Mr. Malave via uh, PayPal. Uh, Key has, he says, um, okay, so he sent a link here. Pull that up. Okay, so I got, I got, um, Got the link, and I don't think he sent a timestamp, which for sure you send a 54 minute video, brethren. We're gonna need a timestamp, you dig? Uh, so Key, go ahead, send your boy a timestamp. You just sent a whole, a whole hour long video, my boy. <laughs> uh, but real quick, I, I do want to point out, let me um, share the screen that there we go. So this kid to me looks demonic. Let me maximize that. He looks demonic. Like that face looks evil. Uh, you look at the eye opening. The eye opening looks uh, not as wide as one would like to see. You usually see people's eyes are low when they're inebriated from drugs, uh, when they're drowsy. Never in the good times. Your eyes are wide open when you're alert, you're happy, you're excited. He has this evil look on his face. And also we see that he's doing his best imitation of the definition of cool that was created by the uh, black American culture. You see he has the cuts uh, that were shaped in his, into his eyebrow by a barber. And this style, uh, you might have heard the Jay-Z song from a while back. He said, three cuts in your eyebrow, trying to wild out. The game is ours. We'll never foul out. Y'all just better hope we gracefully bow out. Now put your hands up, ladies, hustlers, bustlers, everybody. Put your hands up. So you see he's uh, you know, doing what most of them do, which is you grow up as a fucking nerd in the burbs, and then you watch TV and you see what the cool black kids are doing, and you try to do that. So he, he's just one of those nerds, uh, which you know I can't hate him for that. You heard me trying to borrow a little bit of swizzag, but he looks like a real devil, and we're going to get into it. Shout out to McIndall. He writes, just tuned in. I done met and befriended some, <laughs> some old crackheads or homeless brothers who said some deep stuff. And show that they have some talent. It's crazy. Peace of saints. Indeed. Yes. But the funny thing is that you know that the, the limit of their knowledge uh, is a result of where they are when you meet them. So if you meet them as a crackhead, that is a representation of where their knowledge has carried them to. <laughs> right. So they could say uh, some amazing things, but either the knowledge is not as good as it sounds or they've not applied it. Take a look. See if the saints sent in a timestamp. I do not see a timestamp. Shout, shout out to Joseph coming in via Cash App, supporting the work. Appreciate you. Now let's go ahead and take a look, see um, at this video. We'll just give it a little look and then we'll carry on since uh, the timestamp has not been sent in. Huh? Okay. The, bro, oh! bro, bro, the vibe is shit. Like, oh! I got you, bro. Right, send it. I got you, on. I got you some two snow bunnies. Two snow bunnies. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so number one, I've been living player my whole life, you hear me? And undoubtedly, birds of a feather flock together. So my mans didn't put me on slores. I didn't put them on slores. Yeah, we didn't turn up since way back, you dig? And one thing I can assure you of is generally speaking, um, like, bro don't look familiar, you dig? Birds of a feather flock together. He does not seem like a cat that's player enough to either have some extra slores just on the strength of who he is and then be player enough that the slores meet him. They're like, yeah, whoever you recommend, I'm with it because I will mess with you. So I know you probably mess with bosses. Bring him. I'm with it. I don't feel like he's that guy. Now, he's wealthy, so there's going to be some gold diggers around. You dig? Yeah, they're going to be around. And furthermore, what you guys must realize when you're watching television and you see reality TV, much of it is staged. And this is also true when you're watching YouTube. Much of it is staged, especially when you get into the realm of these pickup artists, these PUAs, these kind of guys. These guys are nerds. It's staged. And that's why... If you're a member at patreon.com slash the Saint in the Center, when you hear my player stories, it's real life. That's why I put it behind a paywall. You heard me? They, they, these chicks still out here in the world. I'm still functioning. That's number one. Number two, 
is I don't only tell you the win. You know, these guys only want to tell you about their victories. You know, if you're really a player, you're really in the game, you're going to take a couple setbacks, a couple of L's, a couple of challenges. So I tell you about the whole ball game so you really know how to operate out there. I even teach you beyond knowing how to win, you got to know how to take a loss like a boss. You dig? Pay the cost. Most people don't want to do that. They're, they're pretending that life is all roses and flowers. So anyways, you got this uh, 22-year-old Jewish kid calling the old black dude Unk. Uh, which is comedy enough itself. And then he's brought uh, two, uh, as he calls it, snow bunny harlots, uh, who are essentially probably paid actresses um, who are participating in this fake reality TV show game to garner views for Aiden Ross, who's making a killing, paying the hoes a, a, a couple pennies. And in this case, paying Charleston White, not a damn thing. Woo-hoo-hoo-wee. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm on them like uh, Samuel L. Jackson had him on Black Snake Mountain. Never seen that movie. Yeah, yeah. Just Google it right quick. He had chain around his neck, oh. tied to the port. Yo, uncle. What happened? Can they fry pork chop? Can they fry pork chop? Let's sit down. Let she ain't never tried pork chop. I'm gonna tell them I'm gay, so we both for you. Nah, you. Don't okay, that was super weird. He said, "I'm going to tell them I'm gay, so they're both for you." I can honestly say, in all of my years. I've never heard the homies say that sentence ever in life, ne never in life, you see, because that's an abomination. In fact, I can assure you that there are many places that if you were to call someone such a name, you're going to have to roll your sleeves up. You're, yeah, you're going to have to start moving furniture, make some room because there will be a fade. You tell him you gay. Uh, <laughs> I only got one dude. Say what's up, little mama. Oh, what's up, little mama? Hello, uh, hey, yes, okay, see, and this is another thing. This is where he's getting into this corny ass shit right here. And this is something that I couldn't really rock with if I was Charleston. So you basically have the white guy uh, making a caricature of the black guy in his culture. And you know, Char Charleston says, What's up, little mama? And and then Aiden's like, Yeah, what's up, little mama? Like, come on, bro, like knock it off. Like He's actually tr essentially making fun of Charleston and mimicking him, which is comical because all of the things that Aiden does in reality are basically just a watered down ass photocopy of the black culture. Like my boy has a taper like, bro, you didn't grow up getting tape like that's not your shit. That's you. You start getting tapers because we put that out there. Come on, bro. You got the three cuts in your eyebrows like that's hip hop culture from like the 90s. You know what I mean, like I was a young boy when they was doing that. Like, stop it, kiddo. Oh yeah. Uh, uh, where y'all from? Oh, you sit over there. We live here. Oh, y'all Vegas girls. Vegas. Red flag, oh, red flag. Okay. Where y'all work at? Do y'all work? Where's Bishop oh, at? Rhino. See, there you go. What he said, where y'all work at? That's a good question for these slores. You dig? You you never about to hear a normal answer like, oh, I work at the office building down in downtown. Nah, you ain't about to hear that. Let me let me rewind and see what these slores said. And these are some good looking slores, but the thing is, every time you find a good looking slore, she's pretty much a a slur, yeah. I guess I already said that. Uh, where y'all from? Oh, you sit over there. We live here. Oh, y'all Vegas girls. Vegas. Oh, okay. Where y'all work here? <laughs> do y'all work? Where's Bishop at? Rhino. <laughs> Rhino. Up oh, there, it is right there. He said, "Where do you work at?" She said, "Rhino." Now, the funny thing is that slurs know that being a slur is a bad thing, and rather than you know be straightforward, they always want to play games with it. He said, where you work? Shorty said, Rhino. Ah, that's short for Spearmint Rhino, which is a strip club in Las Vegas. So she's a stripper. That's her, her job. In other words, she's a prostitute. Yeah, I'm just keeping it simple out here if you don't mind. Uh, shout out to the folks supporting the work. Shout out to Stephen X. Appreciate you. <laughs> Y'all know how to bake? I can try. Oh, wow. I'm Italian. So I wow. kinda, you coming closer, I think. I don't know how to bake. I'll bring that shit down. For real? Yes. So y'all don't know how to... Uh, so y'all basically can't cook. <laughs> Pretty much. Oh, but I can me? have someone else cook. Pretty much. Yeah. Oh, really? oh, you can come closer. Do y'all, Jordan? You can stand right here, maybe <laughs> over here by this chair. No. Now, one thing, you know, I do know a lot of strippers. I ain't gonna lie to you. I know a lot of strippers because of a variety of reasons. You dig? But one thing you won't ever see is you'll never see me hire a stripper to do anything for me. I, I've never hired a stripper. You never see me with like. Uh, paid stripper hoes like trying to make me look cool if you see a chick i'm probably running running cock straight through her you heard me yeah or we really cool we we got a good relationship we cool and for whatever reason but i'm not about to hire some stripper hoes to be eye candy for you know these jack off artists on the internet so this kind of thing is just like uh that's gross and when i go to the fights you heard me i'm at the on the floor seats or what have you i'm looking around i'm seeing all these celebrity guys and it's all hollow which is to say that they're all with these girls that they pay. They're with these gold diggers. 
and there's no value there. And it, it just, like, I look at it and I say, oh, that's what success is for you. That's what you've been trying to get your whole life. You you never had hoes, so you got money, and you used the money to get the hoes that you wanted in high school. But here's the difference. I would rather an average uh, to below average chick or a good girl or a chick who hasn't been exposed to much. She came from the, the countryside or another country, whatever the thing, or she's a religious girl, then have this chick who's just body, boom, 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 boom bang. Just super bad, gorgeous chick. Because here's the thing: all those chicks that these these rich guys are with on the floor seats at the boxing match. I had those chicks in high school. You heard me? Because I was I've been the man since I was a kid. So I was digging them chicks down in high school. I was digging them chicks down as a teenager. Did all kind of brutal shit to these hoes. And I know that they have no soul. You see, so if I've been piping them down since I was 17, 18, these chicks are now 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. Ah, I don't want a chick that got them kind of miles on her. You dig? And has had those experiences. No, 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 no. I don't want to be around that. I'm saying oh, over here, Maya. you could sit over here. Okay. And then he'll put the camera like right here. So it's. Like if you were to guess what is chat saying, what is chat saying? Booba. I told and you. W, I, and no offense to you I guys. Told they're you saying W bitches. Meaning the like they don't. fuck with you. Yeah, okay. fuck the chat. Cool. Fuck the chat. So I, with them. You do? I don't know. That's what's up. So. This is my uncle. I'm his nephew. Okay. No. Same eyes, same skin yeah. color. Oh, yeah. thank you. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wait. Wait. So, wait. What skin color do we look like? He, uh, okay. So, we have a terrible sense of humor. And here we are making, making a mockery of race. Now, I, I tell race jokes all the time. I, I just enjoy a good joke in general, but we're making a mockery of race. And it, it's the most obvious thing. It's a very low uh, form of humor here. You know, sarcasm is a low form of humor. And this is kind of like, the girl said, oh, yeah, you guys look like you're related. Same color eyes, same color skin. He's like, oh, what color is our skin? It's like, come on, bro. This is so played. Anyways, um, let's hear more of the, the foolishness. Hit mulatto, kid. Yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I'm mixed. I, I am black. Yes, I can confirm. Yes, I am. My brother like white women. Which part is that? What part do you think? My penis. <laughs> so here we are uh, with these thoughts. And what do thoughts talk about? Sex, because it's the only thing that gives them value. You see, you find these women that you think are gorgeous, or as you might call them bad, the only thing that provides them value to other people is sex appeal, which is why they're scarcely wearing clothes, uh, because that's the only way that they can make themselves relevant in the world of adults. You feel me? That's the only relevance they give. And that is why I often encourage you all to be greater than that. You heard me? I'm not saying don't beat them down. You heard me? Yeah, I beat them down my damn self. But I don't show them respect. You heard me? Yeah, and after I smash them and max them out, yeah, I put them on limited association. I become so disrespectful. You dig? Carrying on. Thank you for that link. And thank you to those supporting the work and those who have uh, clicked the like button. So, so hold on, right? So this Jew kid is pressing me by Jew. We get past the Jewism. Now it's about the gayism. The gayism. So I tell him, yeah, I hate gays. I don't bother them. I don't go out looking for them. But if a gay man is in his room and all us straight and he show any feminine tendency, get your ass out of here, punk. But a real gay man is not going to remain gay around all straight men if ain't none of them fucking him. Mm. Or if he don't think none of them will fuck him. He going to run. Those two spirits don't co- one thing, bro, he playing with is the weirdos. That's how you know Charleston did this some time. They don't play with the weirdos. You heard me? He, bro, does not play with the weirdo. <laughs> I, I'm kind of tripping because he said, if, if you in a room full of straight guys and a gay guy come in, he go stop being gay. <laughs> I'm just imagining the, the weird dude, like it's a room full of... <laughs> The room full of N-words. Everybody in their pose. You heard me do what they do. A gay guy walking in, fruity as hell. <laughs> then when he look around, he just like, oh, yeah, let me knock this shit off. <laughs> let me cut it off. This shit ain't, this ain't the place for this. <laughs> he said he walk in, the gay just come out. He, oh, shit, go ahead, bro. Oh, exist together. So, he, so I let him know up front, yeah, I hate gays, man. I bash him like a motherfucker. Pick on him. Bully him. Mistreat them. Say hateful things about them. So, okay. So, why would you put don't, me don't hold back, on the me. camera with a trans? Don't hold back. I immediately hang up when he say I'm a trans. And I send him a text message. I say, damn, nephew. Why are you trying to make Unc look hateful? 
Mm. That's the text message. That's the documentation. Why are you trying to make Unk look hateful, man? I told you I don't like him. <laughs> the fourth him. day, hey, Unk, I got the Island Boys on. I said, man, I don't want to be on there with them motherfucking incest kissing ass punk. <laughs> I heard about that. Was that actually real? That side, I mean, when cats be popping pills, you're me after uh, 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 Perk, Zanny, uh, Molly, you know, shit, anything will pop off. I didn't know they was doing it. I, I saw it, but I'm going to keep it funky with you guys. I did see it on video, but I was like, is this AI? Is this AI or are they really doing this? And I, I do want to warn you all that we're in such a sick era and technology is extraordinary. When I was in like the second grade, there's a movie called Space Jam. Michael Jordan was playing basketball against cartoon characters and it all looked perfectly real. That was in the second grade. This many years later, they can they can show you anything, right? I mean, and there's a movie with Will Smith. I forget what, what it was called. And he was basically fighting against himself, a younger version, and it actually looked like a young Will Smith. Anything can be fabricated at this time. So one thing I want you all to remember is those men who are actually of honor and integrity know that they will not diverge from who they actually are. That's one of the differences between all these celebrity types, these YouTubers, and me. My fans or the Saints, they see me in person all the time. I invite them over. We kick it. We go out. And they can see I am who I am, who I say I am. I have the things I say I had. I'm actually living according to what I say I believe is really real. You ever see any nonsense put out on me? It's AI. It's AI. The same thing I'd be telling my hoes. Who is that girl you're with? That wasn't me, bitch. That was AI. <laughs> bitch, that was chat GPT. I didn't say that shit. I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, boy, he just come out talking about he on the top. No, no, Unc, you got to come on. I'm not coming on. So while they own, he texted me, come on, Unc, come go in on him. His manager saying, say, Aiden wants you to have no hold bars on him. So they sick him. See, now, one thing I want you guys to notice is when you're operating on a boss level, or shall we say the master level, you utilize the underlings, maybe, shall we say, the laborers or the slaves, the ignorant. You utilize them for your entertainment and for your profit. So Aiden didn't say, hey, I'm going to go in on the island, boys. He said, you, you're you going to go on. Yeah, you you do it. It's kind of like Dana, uh, Dana White, right? Dana White runs the UFC. He doesn't fight in the UFC, right? He runs the UFC, but he doesn't fight in the UFC. Don King promotes the boxing match. He don't fight in the boxing match, which is to say, I ain't got to break a sweat and I ain't got to break my neck. I'll let you do that. I'll just take the check. Ooh, bars. I ain't got to break a sweat. I ain't got to break my neck. I'll just collect the check. I think that's the pimping in me. Carrying on. Me on, so I'm going to be the pet bull. Mm. But they ain't offering me no money. So I'm saying, no, uh, well, uh. But I would like to build a relationship, right? right. So he texts me, God damn it, uh, the island boy just showed me his dick. Come on, come. I said, I don't want to be attached to that. Oh. And this was before the Vegas trip. This before the Vegas trip. Okay. So I'm saying, nephew, I don't want to be attached to that gay shit, my nigga. Why you keep putting all, man? Bring me back when they ain't on there. So they tricked me to put me on there with them niggas. I hang up. I text the manager. You lied to me. So we. Now, this is the important thing to remember is he's stating that. There was deception. Put it this way, even before Charleston was cognizant of the deception, there was deception, right? Which is to say the everything was predicated on setting up Charleston. The very reason that he brought Charleston into his platform or even started associating and talking, communicating with Charleston was such that he could create a kind of conflict between, between Charleston, the representative of black values and black culture, and these weirdos and, and let them collide such that he can get some viral content. And, and Charleston could even further look like a bad, evil, hateful person. And Aiden could make a buck. And then he could also showcase this uh, sexual deviant group of people whom he secretly supports because he probably one of them. I mean, let's be real here. When people say they're allies, are they really allies or are you that? You heard me? I'm not an ally of nothing that doesn't really affect me. Or makes sense to me. Like, why did I go teach uh, poor kids in Baltimore, Maryland? Because I grew up as a poor kid in a terrible school. So I could identify with them. I'm not an ally. I was one of them. You know, human beings are selfish. We're not allies of anything. You hear me? Everything we do is for a selfish reason. We have to be connected to it.
like for example the american government you think that they're trying to help the ukrainians or are they trying to hurt their enemy the russians the american government come on now yeah now obviously they're doing it at the expense of us the american taxpayer as well as many others but they don't care because i'm sure joe biden is still living comfy we already starting off bad all this is documented i said you lie here's the thing my boy if you already start off bad, all the lies are documented. Why did you agree to go deeper into the relationship to go to Las Vegas? This is all of what happened before that. The reason you go, you agree to go to Las Vegas is because it's not about the kids. It's not about the revolution. It's about your pocketbook and your popularity. And you know, the more that you can rise your star in terms of fame, the more access to money you have. And you're paying the price of your soul. When they you hear this concept of people selling their soul, what we're really talking about fundamentally is the idea that you sell out for money. And that's what they're all doing. Yeah, that, that's the only reason you see a blue-haired booty bandit communicating with uh, Top G, who's supposed to be the apex of masculinity. Why would he even want to talk with this guy, right? Or you see the, the valuetainment Adam Salsnick guy hosting the blue-haired booty bandit. I thought you stand against sexual deviance, but you're showcasing it and essentially promoting it. You're platforming it, and you're not arguing against it. Ah, to me, man, y'all. Oh, come on. It's just going to be you and him, you and Aiden, just you and Aiden. The chat room love you. Aiden crowd is 75,000 people here waiting on you. Don't they love you? I'm saying all kids. Man, let me go on over there. This a you doing it for the kids, huh? It's all kids. Let me go on over there. No, when they said there's 75,000 people waiting, you said, oh, you said 75,000? Oh, so I could potentially gain 75,000 new fans just like that and then maybe a million on the replay? Yeah, I better go get that opportunity, that bag. It wasn't about kids. I mean, let's not lie, right? It wasn't about kids because here's the thing. Whether it was 75,000 kids or it was 75 kids, shouldn't have mattered. But you specifically mentioned, said, hey, we got 75,000 kids or 75,000 people viewing. And then you said kids. So we see what's driving and motivating you in, in your effort to conceal it. You're not concealing it. It's as clear as day. And it often is. This is a pawn. This is like nigga resources from the ground you can cipher. Mm -hmm. So aunt coming over here to be on. We have a good time. Do numbers that night. They hit me back. Say, hey. Aiden we do numbers. You see, consistently, everything's about the numbers. And there's nothing wrong with numbers, but it's like, don't play the game of talking about it's for the kids when it's not for the kids, brethren. Don't do that. Uh, shout out to Be Cool G writes, the link to my song isn't working, but I need to make sure my song gets reviewed if you do the episode. How could I make that happen, sir? Okay. Um, we should really create a form at some point, but for now... Um, just go ahead and since you already sent in a baller alert, just hit that email address with a link to your song and we will uh, put it in that episode. So, hey, I sent in a baller alert, maybe even screenshot this just so that we know you know, people are not trying to impersonate you. It's a sick world. And we'll go ahead and get that taken care of. I'd like to offer you a deal. Would you come to Vegas? He'd like to offer you a streaming deal with Kick. Now, here's a funny thing. So now we're talking about that deal that Charleston had initially brought up, but this is after he had already been lied to. So you've been lied to about small, irrelevant things. Now here comes the big thing. You don't think they're going to lie about that? They have more incentive to lie about the big thing that matters, right? Because the difference between them paying you and not paying you for a deal could be a million dollars, could be six figures, hundreds of thousands of dollars. Come on now. So you think they're going to lie about the small stuff and then get all serious business-like professional and integrity-based for the big things. Knock it off. Come on, man. A billionaire writes, lost my aunt this morning. Wow. Father told me and my five-year-old brother bluntly. Brother doesn't fully understand, but should he? And is there a way to explain it to him? No. I mean, what's the benefit of that, right? You always need to think as a man, you know, what is the benefit? How does he benefit? How do I benefit? How does that move us toward our goals, health, wealth, and relationships? You know, understanding death, if he's not understanding it straight away, you know, that would suggest to you that um, he's very young and leave him in his innocence. And truth be told, he will understand that when the right season is uh, is present. and you know, like what you need to be thinking about right now is what are the implications? Sometimes there, there are not really any significant real world implications. It's just how you feel and recovering your feelings over time. 
But no, you don't need to explain that to him. And you said your father told you and your older brother, if your father felt like that was enough, then that was enough. Thank you for asking that. And I, I wish you a quick recovery in terms of uh, that passing. And we all must uh, acknowledge that you know, everyone will go, all of us. And the best we can do is to appreciate people deeply while they're here. Now, I, I really want to thank you for giving us all a reminder of that. And I'm a true believer. You see, when someone comes to my city and it's a friend of mine or family member, you know, I want to spend the time. I never say, oh, how long are you going to be here? Like basically trying to figure out like, oh, like, let me do it at my convenience. No, you're here. I want to invest this time. And that's why if I go somewhere abroad, and I'm often pulling up in people's countries. If someone's like, oh, hey, how long are you here? I'm like, Brett, knock it off. We already done. <laughs> we already done. You dig? Appreciate, appreciate the fact that I'm here. So thank you for sharing that. Wishing you a speedy emotional recovery. I got the message. I said, yeah, she said, come on. We go up there. I don't take no security. Uh, I go by myself with, a, with, 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 my, with my companion. Okay, if you're with your companion, that's not by yourself, but I get what you're saying, Charleston. Uh, Darius writes, thoughts on Michael Sartain's school of social game. I've never heard of it. I've heard, uh, you know, actually last night, um, Michael Sartain's one of his sales guys, I believe had uh, approached me when I was uh, heading to my car. It was late at night. I was actually quite sleepy. Uh, nice young man, you know, good-looking, strong young man, well-spoken, approached me. He said, hey, Mark Way, I'm one of Mark, Michael Sartain's uh, sales guys. Isn't that nice to meet you. I didn't know you lived here. I was like, yeah, actually, it turns out I'm the mayor here. Um, but it was nice to meet the young man, good guy. I've never heard of this uh, social circle game. I don't know what this means or is it about. I don't know if it's a product or, or a philosophy. I'm not familiar with it. Oh, uh, and nigga, uh... They pick us up from the airport and they got three to four days of events planned. Okay. So you're being paid for one hour of work, but you said they have three to four days of events planned. The math ain't mathing. For me. And I don't know what they are. I didn't sign a non-disclosure. I didn't sign no uh, uh, authorization form to release nothing to keep the cameras in my face to go do this, do this, do this, do this. I didn't sign nothing. Did they, did they make you? Did they try to make you? They didn't even offer it. Okay, cool. So I'm saying shame on. Uh, shout to Gensley comes in via PayPal. He writes, um, was Charleston wearing a shirt that says EBT? <laughs> I have to be saying that. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Somebody let me know, but that'd be funny as hell. <laughs> I wouldn't put it past them. You dig? I would not put it past them. On them for not offering it. Right? Uh, they don't even tell me what we're doing. They don't even tell me what we're doing, homie. Before I even fly out, they send me my a screenshot of my flight information. I don't even know what airline I'm flying. <laughs> it just say, Gentlemen, this is what you would call red flags. And, you know, all he's described is a series of flags turning from <laughs> pink to dark red. But there's one thing that's consistent throughout all the red flags. And what's consistent is the fact that he's still participating. This is the same thing with gold diggers, you dig? Which is to say, if they think the money is there, oh, they still coming forward. They still moving with you. What can you do? Uh, Twano writes, um, check my comment in the live chat. Okay, Twano, 2 a.m. Okay, uh, go ahead and repost that for me, Twano. And if anyone saw his comment, uh, please repost it now. The, the confirmation number. I got a call. Say, man, I'm at the airport. Love Field. What, what, what's my airline? Oh, hold on, man. So we in the group text. Charleston's at the airport. What's the airline? I sent it to him. You didn't tell me the airline, man. So I'm telling myself, man, these kids, I'm dealing with these young millionaire kids. So I got to come be responsible too with these motherfuckers. So they say Southwest. Get on Southwest. What's my hotel? You know, part of it is, yeah, perhaps, yeah, it, it's about being a kid and being inexperienced. But, you know, the bigger part of it is not that. The bigger part of it is respect. The bigger part of it is they don't respect you. They probably don't respect much. They probably don't even have self-respect, but they certainly don't respect you. That's the bigger part of it. Because one thing I can promise you, I remember being in university and my university was primarily Asian, mostly ethnic Chinese. And of the whites, 
um, there's a significant number of Jewish folks. And of the Jewish people I know who are high achievers, they come from wealthy families, very diligent, studious personalities, detail-oriented. They're sharp, in other words. They're sharp. They're not the types that are inclined to forget basic things or to leave things undone. And generally, when you see someone at, at a height, whatever they've achieved in, they have traits and characteristics that merit such a level of achievement, which is to say that we might not like Aiden. We might think he's an effeminate uh, sexual deviant who's in the closet, but uh, we'd probably not be honest if we were saying that he's a fool. I think he just was like not really getting things done for you because it was last minute and he didn't really care about you. He figured like, you know, you'll just take what he's doing. You'll accept it. And guess what? You did. And, and that's the important thing to understand is that you know, when, when you will let someone abuse you, guess what they'll continue doing? They'll continue abusing you. Same thing with bullying. Bullies don't bully the tough guy. They bully the weak guy. And you're behaving as a weak person who doesn't have self-respect. So the more you let them continue doing this silliness, they're going to do it. Come on now. So I said, I ain't trusting this shit. So before I get on a plane, I book my shit at the Trump. Cause they ain't telling me where I'm. No, the motherfucker tell them, say, man, somebody go pick you up. Woo, woo, woo. So I take all my weapons that I know I'm to take with me because I'm getting signs. Say, hey, man, he fuck with a lot of rappers. He doing. Now, people often say, if you have to take a weapon there, you shouldn't be there. Th this is mostly true. It's mostly true. It's not entirely true. Every now and then you got to take certain opportunities and, you know, you got to show up with the Roscoe and get like that. I used to have this gorgeous Latina. She used to live in East Los. You heard me. And if you're from L.A., you know what that means pretty little ting short hair which is unusual for the latinas because they usually had a long hair you heard me she lived in a cholo hood um short ting a uh, short hair curvy hips wide as all get out man bad and she don't mess with black dudes i can't blame her you heard me grew up in the sa hood i used to have to dip out there in the middle of the night man with the clapper on the lap because that's just you know, that's what time it is you heard me i'm pulling up in the sa hood um, now some people say, well, if you got to take the clapper, you shouldn't go. Nah, nah, I needed to go. I, in fact, I needed to go a couple of times. You know, you can't live in fear. You just need to be prepared for some things. Now, generally, you know, if you got to take the clapper, you probably don't want to go, but you know, if, if there's an opportunity, take the opportunity. So I just want to point that out because people say a lot of things that sound true, but might not be entirely true. Charleston talking about he has a lot of weapons on him. I, I can't hate that. I mean, he he's a fairly small guy. And even if you're not a small guy, it's always nice to have a little tool on you of some sort so that you could work with, especially when you're moving around solo. And, you know, you might have some level of acclaim or fame and people recognize you, but you might not recognize them, which means they have the drop on you. You heard me? They could just pull up on you and do something crazy. And you wouldn't, you'd be none the wiser. You wouldn't even be able to defend yourself. You don't have time because they saw you coming, but you didn't see them coming because they just look like a regular person. On this, I'm already seeing how they booking me to get her. This could be some shady shit. <laughs> Bro, it's already shady. Man, this ain't this ain't how you interact with a motherfucker doing business. Talking about a streaming deal. Just in case it is, I'll voice my concerns when I get there. And I'm voicing my concerns in text messages. Yeah, but your concerns are <laughs> you're still going along with it, though. You've not put your foot down, so you're just babbling. It's kind of like hoes do. Uh, shout out to Johnny. Comes in by Cash App. Appreciate you saying. I also acknowledge tuition uh, came in from Clifton as well. Appreciate y'all. We'll carry it on. And I'm going uh, to go over to um, another clip from um, Aiden in a second. Letting them know, hey, man, I'm a grown man. I'm really a business professional guy. I don't operate like this. Stop it. You're wearing a chain. <laughs> and it's not even like a, a, <laughs> a low key chain. You're wearing the, the least low key chain possible. And what's worse than that is you're wearing it on top of a, a goddamn collared shirt with a necktie on. Stop it, please. I want to stand up. I'm like George Foreman when he was fighting in his old age. He... It's going to be like Bible study. Okay. Yeah, we're going to have study lessons. Yeah, you go. You got... So right now they're clearly at the um, Red Rock uh, Hotel and Casino in Summerlin, which is a, an affluent suburb up the mountain from Las Vegas. Oh, I wanted to ask you a quick question, bro. What? Someone told me you... This is the... The, the youth being disrespectful. You don't call a man that many years your senior bro. I sent a dick picture to Bam Man Cabo. Yeah, I did. Uh, huh? Yeah, I did. He sent me a muscle picture. 
So you sent Bam and Kevin a dick pic? Yeah. Why? Uh, probably because it's going to get shared. It's 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 uh it's an outlandish thing, and people run with things like that. That's why, dummy. You know why he did that. Anyways, uh, again with the uh, skittle guzzling topics, like, and this is common on the internet. There's really nothing for these guys to talk about because neither of them are philosophers and both lack experience, and so they talk about silliness. And this is precisely why neither of them have been canceled because. You know, they've not been canceled and they will be allowed to grow because they will never pose a significant threat to the powers that be. Sent him it? Yeah, I seen him. Uh, uh, uh. That guy? No? How? I ain't never seen no. You both people watch porn ridiculous. That's true. The guys included. That's true. So does that make everybody gay? They watch porn with Dixon and they watch, they watch Jason Love Dick go in Atlanta. Play. He said, oh. Uh, he sent me back and he that's said, he sent me back, said, that's, that's gay ASL. And I don't know what the no, fuck that meant. I'm sorry. You're gay. No, I, he's not. I, no, he So random uh, black dude that looked like Whoopi Goldberg mixed with uh, one of the, mixed with Offset. <laughs> so Whoopi Goldberg slash Offset, uh, goddamn future clone. Why all these N-words look the same? I mean, good Lord. And, and check this out. I know some cats is like, man, that's how the young boys is nowadays. Nah, 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 nah. I remember when I was a young boy in high school, I ain't look like the other young boys. They was wearing Jordans. I wasn't wearing Jordans. You heard me? These balls, this is got goddamn fake ass Migo over here. You know, a future lookalike. No, it changed right. my perspective. No, hold on. Guess that, I've never seen it. So he's coming out of nowhere disrespecting an older black man, which I don't respect. And what's worse is he keeps pointing at him, saying you're gay. Generally speaking, in the Western culture, pointing is impolite. And in all cultures, saying somebody is gay is disrespectful. Within the religious community and also in the pen, uh, these are words that can result in a fatality. You see, it's an abomination. So you're pointing that dude in his face and calling him a skittle guzzler. Like, you you completely out of line, bro, especially because he's older. Like, that's way out of line. The dick, have you? I've seen my dick. Well, exactly. I've seen my dick. So as, as, long as, as long as you don't see another man's dick, that makes you gay. So I understand that, that part. But the man said he sent him his dick corrosing with, with oil. For yeah, he dick. told me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, look, look at the camera. Look at that. I so, said, so, say, so, I so he already said it. He just said it. It's two men talking. This dude is weird as hell. Like, I don't know who this black dude is, but he's completely irrelevant clone ass nigga ain't got no personality this motherfucker is tremendously irrelevant and it's like why are you here i remember i was watching the conversation between cuck 22 and uh tate and you had aiden ross and i was like why are you here <laughs> with regards to aiden ross like you're <laughs> completely irrelevant to this conversation why are you here now we got uh whoopee right here and it's like bruh you fake ass migo why are you here do you watch porn with dicks in it? Yes, no, sir. I watch yeah, Put I it. No, no, no. I got porn you on my phone. Man, you lying like a motherfucker. Now, listen to this the idiocy of this generation. But I got porn on my phone right now. I got porn on my phone right now. My first, I'm like, boy, is you weird? You're, you're proud of that? Bro, when, where I grew up, like, motherfuckers would, whether they had it or didn't have it, and most truth be told, didn't have it because you couldn't get internet porn. You had to have like a VHS. You heard me? And there's no way in hell you're just going to have a VHS of actual pornography in your house for your mom's to find. You fuck around and get your ass beat for that one. But the point is this. You, you, having phone, uh, porn on your phone is weird as hell. It's just weird as hell, number one. Number two, what are you, saving it? This motherfucker went to the web, so he's saving the goddamn videos, downloading them and shit. That's strange as hell. And number three, you're proud of it enough that you would tell another man as well as an infinite number of persons watching online. You're an imbecile, but more importantly, you are a person who lacks shame. You see, shame is an important thing. It, it keeps people behaving, and that's why the wicked folks in today's society, they hate shame. You're fat shaming me. Bitch, being fatful is extreme. Being fat, I think I said fatful. I didn't invent it a word. Fatful. That hoe is fatful. <laughs> being fat is shameful. It's unhealthy. It will lead to premature death. It's, it is shameful. We have shame around it to protect ourselves as human beings, as the human species. 
But, um, you know, they, they want things that are shameful to not <laughs> feel shameful. But that's because they're, they want to be their cruddy selves and they want to be accepted. But what's worse, where there's a lack of shame, they spread their poison. They corrupt the youth, which is why we must maintain shame. It is shameful to have pornography on your phone. It is shameful to watch another man's scrotum and phallus. That is shameful. You should knock it off. There's something wrong with you. You heard me? You lying like you lying. 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 No problem, lying. Lying. I'm lying. Lying. We don't even want to talk. Nigga, every man in the world, every man, we're not we're not saying yesterday. Have you ever in your life? Have you ever in your life? Come on, my nigga. Just say it's yes or no. Yes or no. Yes or no. In your life. I also want you to notice who the agent of the agent of disharmony really is. These persons are true devils in that they hang back and they let the Negroes fight among one another. You, you've not observed any argument or disharmony between Charleston and uh, Aiden. And this is in part because Aiden's clever, but the greater part of it is that Charleston is a docile, obsequious little slave. He doesn't want to upset Massa. So though Massa is the architect of all this weird conversation topics, he's the architect of all of the red flags and the lapses in service and support as Charleston has taken his journey into Las Vegas. But Charleston has not confronted Aiden. There's no bad blood. He's only confronting the other black guy. And now they're going head to head at each other while Aiden sits back and enjoys the trauma, which benefits his pocketbook. Amazing. And then here's the funny part. The two Negroes think that they actually have a real beef with one another. <laughs> this is great. I'll take out a little bit of time for you all to hit that like button for those of you who have not. And also, if you'd like to support the work and you haven't, this would be a good time. Go ahead and send in your comments, questions now, and I will get to them right uh, as soon as I step back in. Oh, yeah. Get the likes up. If we're if we going to carry this on at the minimum, get the likes up. I acknowledge Rashawn. He writes, peace to the saints. Just finished supplying my son with everything he needs for school, including new shoes, phone, etc. And my BM talking about she's going to report me for not bringing him back to her afterward. Avoid these monsters. <laughs> Bruh, I was just jotting some notes down for the book of dark truths. You dig? And I feel you, bro. It's, it's an unfortunate thing. And I hope that you are able to find a permanent solution to that kind of behavior. All of our prayers go out to you. Um, I don't know what age your son is. And hopefully um, you have some good controls over that phone and you know the content uh, you know, going in and out of that phone. Now I acknowledge Ishmael comes in by cash app. He writes, peace of saints. Hope all is well. We'll catch the replay. Absolutely. And all is well, you know, and that that's a state of mind. You know, that's a choice for all to be well. And I, I thank you for that. May I acknowledge uh, I am underdog just became a member at the assassin.com. Maybe we welcome him warmly within this thing of ours. Carrying on. No. Yeah, yes or no. Go come on, homie. Let's be real. Right. Nigga don't want to be real. Nigga, come on. Nigga, be real. Every nigga in the world I watch a porn, porn. Yes. with a dick in it. Facts. Every man in the I world. Watch girls masturbate. Nah, no, we're not asking not, that, not right? No, I'm saying, have you ever we're not watched asking porn? that. No. Cow. No. Okay, I mean, on, we don't want to talk to him no more. He can't keep it. So we have the the black dude um, who doesn't know who he is because he's trying his best to look like a rapper. Any rapper doesn't even matter, right? Uh, he doesn't know who he is. And he's over here lying, uh, <laughs> and everyone knows it's a lie. The two fellas there know it's a lie. The cameraman knows it's a lie. The millions of people watching it online know it's a lie, but he's showed his stick into his lie. And if he was straight like Indian hair like that, um, he's trying to portray himself as never having watched pornography, then 
involves a, a male scrotum and phallus, which would be great if that was true. I really wish for him that that was true. He wouldn't also additionally be making uh, skittle guzzling jokes, which he is. Real on camera. He can't keep it real on camera. We can't get. I didn't move up. Why you? Why you work? Why you work? Why as a man? As a man, why you work? Now the emotionalism is coming out and. For me, when I start to see this kind of thing, especially if it's with someone I don't know, immediately at this point, and may you all learn from this, at this point, my antenna, my antenna would have went up. Now, granted, I don't know if he'd have came at me the way he's coming at Charleston, because obviously I'm bigger than Charleston. I'm younger than Charleston. So he might not have even tried to play me like he's trying to play Charleston. But at this current moment, my antenna would have went up. But also, I don't argue in general. I don't argue. Um, so this kind of back and forth bickering, you know, unless it was truly in jest, I was enjoying it, but generally I, I probably wouldn't even be having this conversation, but right now my antenna would go up and I'd be thinking like, oh, it seemed like bro need a fade. You are I me? Mean? It seemed like he needs to get touched up real quick. The underdog writes, peace of saints, proud to say I'm a new member of the SAS and looking forward to growing and connecting with like-minded people. Absolutely. You're in the right place for that. And that's really what is most important to us is connecting a meaningful network and having everyone prosper at a higher level. We welcome you. Worried about where I send my dick. I can show you my point. As a man, That's why he worried about where I send my dick? No, but why he worried about where I send my dick? How do you As a man, worried about it. So why you ask me about my dick then, nigga? No, why you worried about it though? Prime, we're just asking. Come on, my nigga. Prime, have you ever watched for the dick? Bro. Have you ever? Obviously, I don't. He know, know, I don't want to talk with him no more. Man, every man have you ever watched this? He fucked up. He didn't ask a question. I'm telling you, I did. I know. Another thing I, I wouldn't like now realize perhaps they have to stay reasonably close for the to to stay in frame of the camera. But I want you all to notice number one, look at Aiden. <laughs> this boy looks sweet as hell. This boy look like he didn't just drink a whole goddamn gallon of sugar Kool-Aid. But he is in the sweetest position ever. So one, he's reducing his physical form, which is to say to take up less space. Obviously, the more dominant uh animal is the one that's expanding to dominate and control more space even if you look at the weaker animals in nature the blowfish it expands to take up more space to look more intimidating he's doing the opposite he's retreating he has his arms crossed within his crotch like a broad so he's even covering the the scrotum and the phallus which is also another sign of submission in the animal kingdom then you have the black guy the offset look-alike He's obviously feeling aggressive because he's leaning over past Aiden or Aiden as though Aiden is not there, which, you know, you know, shows that, you know, he, he ready to rock. He feeling real live and real confident in his ability to overcome Charleston. He doesn't perceive Charleston to be a threat. So he's leaning in toward Charleston, which this again is something that will be putting my spidey senses up. Now I hate when I get into these situations, because every time I'm like, bro, I need that fade. What's happening? They're like, oh, they act like I'm the bad guy. Like, no, no, no. He was making too many signals. You heard me? Like, we ain't going to play with it. Let's just get after it. You dig? So, like, this kind of lean over. I'm like, bro, like, what's happening with you? Like, why are you leaning over here like that? Like, wh what's up with that? Yeah, I, I would already probably been on my feet by now. That's just me, though. Uh, and then you got Charleston. I don't think he perceives the threat yet. Now, maybe I'm just an L.A. cat. You heard me? And that's how we are. But I, I feel like the threat is there. I don't like how it's rocking right now. No, but he, my he did though. My did. How did I get the grown man? Nigga, you, I, nigga, you played. Oh, hold on. Whoa, hold on. See right there. Like now you're standing up. Now I'd have been like, wait, wait, wait. Like if you stand up, like I for sure need to stand up because there's nothing worse than getting socked out while you weren't ready. You should have been ready. Kind of flashback. And see, this is how Cali cats are. Even when you look at little Kelpie, you know the the nerd kid who thought he was a P. Um, the little nerd kid who was on, um, he was set up by Adolf 22 on No Jumper. Oh, this is a familiar situation, right? You got Adolf and then you got Aiden, right? Adolf, you know, let the blacks work for you and, you know, make money off of them. Same thing with Aiden, let the bl the dumb blacks work for you, make money off of them. Same thing. And then let them fight amongst each other for, for my wealth and entertainment. It's like he's the Roman emperor, like the gladiator battles. <laughs> So anyways, uh, you got uh, Offset, then stood up with his purse. <laughs> Shout out to them balls with purses. It's crazy. Um, yeah, if I was Charleston, I would have had to stand up right now because I can't let him get off on me. He got leverage. You hear me? Now, this is a bad look. And one thing I never do is I never make assumptions that we're not in a state of nature. Things can get primitive at any moment. I never want the other person to have the advantage 
which is to say that, yeah, sure, you're in a, a dining commons in a casino and resort, and there are cameras everywhere inside of a casino. But I still, if he stood up, I got to stand up. But probably I would already stood up first because I always want to get off first. You dig? If it's going to get escalated, I'm going to escalate it. Don't even start it with. Hold on. Hold on, nigga. You laid on the back. You laid on the back in the camera and honked the earl like a punk yesterday. This nigga did a whole vogue dance. This nigga did a whole vogue dance. Sitting around eight and playing gay games. This nigga play. This nigga play gay games every day. This nigga play gay games every day. Talking about somebody gay. Man, this nigga better shut up. But then, but I said it to you though. Why you worry about? Why you worry about why I send my dick? You know what I mean, bro? Why is this nigga? Why is this nigga into my dick? Well, this nigga is Why is this nigga? It, so it's funny how you just call somebody uh, a skittle guzzler and then you, you sit back and smile like a broad with your long hair. <laughs> kind of shit is that? What planet are we on? Broden just called somebody a skittle guzzler. Then he leaned back next to the Jewish kid, smiling like a hoe, wearing a purse. Hold on, let me let me re-describe that. Bro just called somebody a skittle guzzler all while wearing a purse. Well, wearing a purse with long hair, smiling like a hoe, leaning into another man. Bruh, stop it. <laughs> the world is confused. Nigga into my dick talking about I'm gay. Another black man Bruh. with gold chains say he watched women porn. I do. Talking about my dick, though. Why did he jump in this conversation? He say he got uh, girl. Why did he jump in this conversation? Why you, but he won't okay, be so real. So why, why I don't, don't want to talk why? to this nigga no more. See, there we go right there. That's what, like, he he feels too comfortable with space. Like, generally, I don't even like people touching me in general, but in this kind of situation, like, bro, don't don't put your hands on me. Please don't. Bro, why did he jump in this conversation? Oh, I, I, but he won't. Get see, he, he got his hand over. He keeps breaking that, that space barrier. And we see that Charleston has been very respectful of that space barrier. It could be because he doesn't want the escalation. You see Aiden again is sitting there like a good little woman with his hands in his crotch and he's on silent mode, which really, I mean, his plan is working perfectly because if you track back the situations that Aiden has invited Charleston into, they've all been conflict oriented situations in which Charleston was set down as like some kind of gladiator or a uh, you know, blackmail buck to engage in conflict. So for example, he set Charleston up. He said, oh yeah, come talk to so-and-so. And it ended up being a, a, a female impersonator and there was a conflict there. Then he said, hey, come come talk to the island boys. And he knows that there was going to be a conflict there. And so he keeps on making, creating these situations. And the worst part about it is Charleston is falling with the assurance of a zombie toward what he thinks is a bag, but really it's just embarrassment and humiliation. Be real. So why, why I don't want to talk to this nigga no more because he won't be real. I hate a fraud. This nigga is a fraud. You was a fraud. Yeah, you nigga is a fraud. All day, but you sent the man your dick. This like, nigga is a fraud. You talk about Say, all day. This nigga is a fraud. He won't even answer the question. Uh, you talk about I don't even know it. I don't even know it. I don't even know it. I just said it. Why this nigga worry about my dick? Okay. Why this nigga worry about he done jumped in a dick conversation. Two of me, we having a dick conversation. Did nobody invite him? He just come jump in and I dick conversation. Listen to me. I ain't going to lie to you. This shit funny as hell right now. He said, we having a dick conversation. <laughs> Look, that, that's a conversation I never want to be a part of. <laughs> Especially when it's with two other niggas. What the fuck? He said, we having a dick conversation. Please stop that. Please stop. He said, me and you. Me and you, Aiden. We having a dick conversation. How did nigga come into get our dick conversation? Oh, shit. Holy shit. That's terrible. Come on, bro. Please stop that. Conversation. That's not that's not normal to you, right? But why you in this dick conversation? You you in with I hate these kind of niggas. Just be real. I just asked you ever seen more. Say, did y'all see that nigga do that gay dance? Did y'all see him do the gay dance to the King Von song? Listen. Did y'all see him do all that gay shit? And then he just and then he jumped on his back. Doing the king stuff. Come on, my nigga. Come nigga back quit gay talk my ass. He right, in a so, dick. Hey, listen, listen, listen. Hey, we in a dick conversation. Ask, he can can he excuse me out of my dick conversation? Can can you excuse him out of my dick? This my dick. Uh, shout out to Charles because he is right in as much as like brethren. Who are you? Like literally, who are you? You're you're trying your best to look like uh, some drug using rapper. You have no relevancy in this conversation, and here you are, all the same, like inserting yourself into the conversation. Please exit stage left. 
Uh, Saints, uh, we are uh, winding down. Oh, actually, I guess not people supporting the work. Um, shout out to Olimuyua. He sends in a link. Okay, so he got a SoundCloud link in. And I am going to need to write down your name so that I can pull this back up. Okay, so okay, cool. So I got your name written down, and we will pull this up when we do that live stream. Thank you for sending that in. Austin writes, there has to be there have to be strangers here in this conversation. Oh, absolutely. And the funny thing too is that you know the internet fame and internet clout, one half of these guys have fake followers, right? So they might be looking like they got a million on IG or a million on YouTube, but really they're probably somewhere around like 200,000, 400,000, which is why they're able to sit there, right? They're able to sit there because people are walking by who don't know or recognize them because they're clearly in uh, a public part of the um, Red Rock Casino Resort. It looks like they're in the food court, like right next to the food court, actually. No. <laughs> what we talking about, my dick? Yeah, this nigga, try, like, this nigga, this no, nigga trying to over talk about my dick. Too, no, what, we, no, what, we, what we talking listen, about, my dick, though? Listen, listen, listen. Listen, listen. I'm this questioning about it. Real, this nigga, you. he's, he's questioning me about my dick. dick him, <laughs> but it's my dick we talking about. This nigga mad about my dick. We didn't ask that. No. It's amazing how long they can bicker on this silly topic. That's my dick. Why is he stuck on my dick? <laughs> I need to use this as a, a goddamn skit in a trap. That's why I was questioning about it. I was like, oh, have you ever watched porn? You were out to the people who spend money on designer and still look garbage. Nigga <laughs> ate it, got on this ugly ass Gavinci shirt. Uh, look like a motherfucker got in one of the alleys in downtown LA. It's probably a real one too, and it looks fucking terrible. Shout out to the people making bad fashion decisions. Yerby, uh, just go ahead and get dripped up. MDBlabel.com. Yerby, it's the simplicity, it's the beauty and the simplicity. Gavinci just splashed their name across this ball's chest when really the simplicity would have done much better. Now, now back to Charles arguing with this. That's what he said. Big ass offset. Now look. What do watch your porn got to do with a man sending somebody somebody's dick? Why? Hold on. Question, guys. This man is just yeah. asking me a straight up. Somebody said the audio is choppy. That's because I'm fast. Dude, what you talking about my dick for? What you talking about my dick for, nigga? I'm fast forwarding it to the count. Oh. Okay, here we go. I think we almost got. It. Hey, nigga. Wait, what fuck is you talking you about? You sent me your dick before. No, I didn't. Oh, oh this nigga no, 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 this no, 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 play no, no, gay no, game no, thirty. No, 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 nigga, I ain't. Hold on, bro. Hold on. Oh, the sound is out? Say word. Can someone else confirm that the sound is out? Adios, Master Buckeye. One second. Okay, I switched off of the I just switched off of the actual microphone. I'm gonna switch it back. Okay. All right, people are playing. Okay. So I'm gonna try to switch it back to my microphone. Confirm that you can uh, hear it when it goes back to the microphone in a second. Okay, confirm that the audio is back, high quality coming from the mic. Give you guys a little bit of time to confirm that you can hear from the mic right now and then we'll get going. Also, for those of you who have not hit that like button, go ahead and do that. We got some real deep analysis going on here. All right, we're hearing that it's good. All right, fantastic. Let's work. I ain't playing with you, nigga. Nigga, I ain't playing with you then. You gay, nigga. You gay, nigga. This nigga. Hold up, y'all listen. Hey, you know what I like about Charleston? First off, it's funny as hell how he clowned it, old boy. But I specifically like how uh, he keeps turning the camera, which is clearly appears to be a computer, a laptop computer. He keeps turning the camera toward himself, like fuck this nobody ass nigga. <laughs> which is true. Like, who the fuck is this boy? Boy name is Prime, bro. Like, get the fuck out of here, man. Use your use your government name. Be yourself, man. This man is trying to get a logical question. 
He come in, oh, you, nigga, what you talking about? My dick saw my nigga. What you talking about? You, he, he get an explanation. Why do it matter? Why you talking about my dick, nigga? Why you talking about my dick? It's too many. You right, you right. We having a big conversation. And the funny thing that I find to be very manipulative is even though Aiden is appreciating this because this is what he actually tried to organize, drama, He's acting like he's somehow above it. Like, is anyone else picking up on that manipula manipulation? He's acting like he's somehow above the whole situation and not involved and out of it. Yet he stays in the camera frame. You know, he stays in the middle, literally and figuratively. He's in the middle of the whole conflict in a literal sense and figuratively. But he's acting like he's above it and he's not participating. Let the dumb blacks argue with one another. I'll just sit here and get paid. Not, we're not, we're talking about my dick. Yeah, but why are you talking he about my dick? He's asking you a question. He, he, he interviewing me. You, you, you don't have a name about your dick. We're, I'm another man. You're going to interview another man about your dick. Why are you so into my dick? Why are you so why into your dick? Why is this nigga so into my dick? Why is this nigga so into my dick? He won't even let... Aiden, oh, the crazy thing is I wouldn't have even played this much. I've just been trying to get to the part where it's supposed to escalate into physicality and they keep repeating the same argumentative sentence repeatedly. I'm like, damn, when's it going to happen? And I had fast forward at one time and I missed it. So this is the only reason I'm listening to this nonsense. How about your dick? Right. What's the interview about? Right? Right? I asked about the clip I saw. Oh, that he act like he hate. I, I, I think he getting jealous of me and Aiden's friendship. I don't know. I think this nigga might be. Oh, see, here we go right now. Now, this is the house nigga mentality. This is the house Negro syndrome, wherein you're observing that uh, they're they're jockeying for the love and affection of their boyfriend, Aiden, of their master. Both of these uh, black Jezebels are looking for their their white zaddy. You dig? And now you even have Charleston make the you know, romantic. You ever put your arm around your girl? You ever, you ever put your arm around your girl? He's he's mate guarding right now. You got Charleston mate guarding, putting his arm around old boy. And now this is when it's about to escalate, it appears. Getting jealous. Because he was just asking a basic question. And he came over here with all this hoorah and goorah. We were having a normal conversation. The clip you sent me, I was right, asking about. Right, Come on, my nigga. Let the man listen, do his job. Let the man get the listen, content. Listen, let's let's well, let the talking. man get the content, nigga. You the one. You the one came in and said, "Hey, y'all." No, 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 no. Listen, listen. This man was asking me a question. This man, nigga, you gay, nigga. You into my dick though, but you into my dick though, gay ass. It, both of these cats are extraordinarily uh, disrespectful. Give me a second. I'm about to switch cameras real quick. See, first off, bro said, watch how you talking. Like all of a sudden he's a goon. Now, this is a clear indicator that, you know, you pretty much are taking that L. You feel me? He taking that L and he's kind of big mad right now that he's getting embarrassed because he's he can't match wits and he can't match tongues paws with Charleston White. So as a result, what he has to do is resort, resort to the physicality, which is even more despicable and embarrassing because, you know, Charleston White at the end of the day is your elder. You know, he's not really gotten out of line to where you need to escalate physically. Now, granted, Charleston is ignorant. He's an ignorant character. So if the young boy want to escalate, then, you know, Charleston's going to escalate as well. What can you do? And this is why the N-words stay at the bottom. You a faggot, nigga. Faggot ass, nigga. Now they're over here slurring each other, and you know it's even comedic in as much as probably in reality neither one of these black fellas are are actually skittle guzzlers, and in reality they actually neither one of them have a real legitimate beef with the other one. So you should ask yourself, who tricked them? Who tricked these two uh, blacks to think that they have an issue with each other? Who did that? How'd that happen? Huh? That's what you should be asking yourself. Bitch, uh, nigga, you uh, came and jumped no in. Nigga, no you, no you ain't gonna do that, nigga. What you gonna uh, do here, nigga? <laughs> <laughs> I like that. See, I now here's the thing with me. I called this a mile away. I already knew this was gonna escalate. You always want to be the es the one to escalate it, but Charleston did get up in, in a fairly aggressive way. And the funny thing is, look, <laughs> look, <laughs> look. Look at Aiden white ass. Aiden Jewish ass that got this motherfucker is getting out of Dodge. This ball and got up so damn swiftly.
He is getting out of Dodge. Shout out to Rob. He writes, Peace of Saints off topic. How do you deal with a woman feigning compliance? Oh, they do that. He writes, I'm worried about what's really under the mask. Oh, there's always something under the mask. And generally, especially if they have had a lot of experience, and sadly, a lot of women nowadays have had a lot of experience, is that it's actually generally going to take time. But the best way to reduce the time to figure out if she's a real one is to demand that sacrifice of her. You hear me? is basically to ask her to you know, stick it to your mitt, which is to say, make a contribution. And the more you see her making that contribution, you know she's a real one. You, you heard me, if she don't wanna spend a dollar, if she don't wanna sacrifice her time, if she doesn't view your money as her money, meaning she likes to save and preserve it and grow it, then you know she's just a scandalous little dirt bag. And many of them are, and it's okay. And that's why you gotta keep the game flowing. You better what get you that lady. Now, the, I got to rewind it because I like the way it popped off. You dig? I like the way this one popped off. I really do. This boy Aiden was swift. Like Charleston stood up, black dude stood up, and Aiden actually stood up at the same pace. Like as though he was a, that boy is swift. And shout out to Charleston because he already reaching for the hawk. You heard me? He he reaching for the weapon. Like, yeah, I could get this done. Then you got bird chest ass Migos over here. And these motherfuckers that be on these pills all the time, man. These boys need to start eating more. And they think they could wake up and eat a mouthful of pills and sustain life. These skeleton ass shaped niggas. And if that ain't the most whole statement ever, you gonna get your knife, bro. Shut up, man. Like, why are you snitching? We we got the camera rolling, bro. Shout out to Charleston for stepping out of frame. You dig? And then you got uh snitchy McGuire over here. You gonna get your knife, bro, bro? If you if you won't smoke, let's just get this smoke. We don't need to narrate the whole affair. See, he don't want no issue right now. Because before he kept breaking that that plane and kind of leaning into Charleston's personal space, he was definitely already in Aiden's personal space. But Aiden might like that type of thing. But now he's in Charl. He, before he was in Charleston's space, and now all of a sudden he seemed like he don't want to. He don't want to break that space. He seemed like he's keeping his distance. And these this is called bluffing. You hear me? In my neighborhood, we used to call this wolfing. Like, oh, you wolfing, which is to say, yo ass, you got some bark, but you ain't got no bite. Sit your nice ass down. See, now now look at the body positioning. And this is how you could tell the difference between a bitch and a real savage. See, right now it's go time. Yeah, it's go time, little buddy. And look at Charleston. He is squared up with old boy. He's facing old boy. Like, look what it do. Let's get it. And then you got this nerd ass, clone ass, rapper, fake ass, future, bullshit ass, whoopee gold, dread lock having faux chain ass having motherfucker young ass t-shirt sleeves is too high having ass bootleg cartier glasses having ass frail bird chest having ass motherfucker he don't really want no smoke because here he is instead of facing the person that is a direct threat to you yo ass is facing the camera instead of facing the one that's a direct threat Yo ho ass is facing the camera. That's cute, little buddy. And you're lucky that Charleston is advancing age and he really ain't trying to cause an issue in front of Massa because I know a lot of motherfuckers would have whooped your motherfucking ass. Look at this pussy over here facing the camera. Motherfucker, face the nigga that I got an issue with you, bitch. Yeah, do a motherfucking thing. Hey, and, sh and shout out to Charleston because he right. The boy ain't gonna do a motherfucking thing. Cute ass. I know how to handle bro, situations. Bro. Bro. Ass, bro. What the, the fuck, situation. bro? He called Broski a pretty punk. Look, that's some jail shit. You heard me? In jail, they call the weirdos punks. You hear me? Called him a pretty punk. That's some shit my uncle would call him. Come on, homie, you just came and jumped in or something. I ain't got nothing to do with that, nigga. Look at this sucker putting his jacket back on. Get your bitch ass up out of here, man. I hate to see it. I, I honestly, I really hate to see people, you know, with all that big ass talk like they want some smoke. And then, oh, it's smoke time. All of a sudden, these niggas don't smoke. They on, they got the nicotine patch on. All of a sudden, these motherfuckers don't smoke. Uh, shout out to Austin. He writes, watching, uh, watch how you talking uh while smiling doesn't match. Exactly, exactly. Cute ass little weirdo. Nicaragua Saint writes, what's the best way to build the pec muscle? Uh, having a variety of exercises that you do that target that one muscle 
And like, for example, when you're using incline and decline, when you're on the, and I, I think free weights are actually better if you want to build the pectoralis, you know, get on that bench and use and press free weights and then do it at a, you know, different inclines. And also a number of push up variations, you know, with your feet up, hitting them push ups and things like that, that's going to build up that chest. And the chest is a critical area, not only um, for useful purposes, but also for the aesthetic. You know, you have a better built up chest, it's going to make the abdominals look better. It's going to make the stomach look flatter. Carrying on. It's just not that serious, yeah, bro. Nigga, none of this shit is serious, bro. I'm just saying, none of this shit is. Serious, nigga, 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 me what did i do oh his feelings are hurt oh shout out to darius he writes if you live in a metropolitan area where most young women are of that ethnicity where their parents give them that book that tell them what not to do should you relocate or continue trying to crack well it depends on if, if you don't like those kind of chicks at all then i would say yeah you might as well relocate but if you're down to you know get some of that persuasion then i will go ahead and mess with it because i tell you what one of them is going to get cracked. Hold on one sec. Yeah, now one of them is going to go. I promise you that one. And I'm telling you this. I know this from experience. In fact, I went to the to university with the homie Dante, black dude at Berkeley. And as I said, Berkeley is overwhelmingly uh, Asian, specifically ethnic Chinese. And bro was knocking them down left and right. That's his thing, though. He he, That's his area of focus. Now, me, I never focused in that area. But you heard me. I caught a few of them uh, my damn self. But yeah, now nah, I say keep on going. Rando writes, hey, Saint, I was talking to this girl in class who was giving me the strong eye. They do that. So I spit some game and she ended up inviting me to a church party. OK, don't believe it. When I say don't believe it, I mean like her whole religious act. Don't believe that. He writes, but I felt I didn't belong. Was I right? Were you right to feel that way or were you right to not go? You know, it depends on what your goal is, right? So if your goal is to smash and dash, you heard me, some cats to do whatever it takes, <laughs> you know, cats come in and like, look, I'm a born again Christian. I just want to say I love the Lord. Hallelujah. Holly. I want to testify. Oh, I caught the Holy Ghost. Like some cats to do whatever it takes. You heard me get them draws. Um, so <laughs> were you wrong or were you right? It, it depends. At the end of the day, you got people who say the ends justify excuse me, the mean the ends justify the means, which is to say if you can get to the goal, take whatever route will get you there. One thing I will point out is whether she invites you to a church party, a, a, a or, or whatever the case may be, these religious girls are mostly no different than the secular or non-believing girls. So I wouldn't buy that story at all. At all. You heard me. Carrying on. Thank you for that question. I jumped out of this shit. You come jump into something you ain't got no business in, nigga. Say, homie, he booked me to come here, not you, nigga. <laughs> shout out to charles and he like look bro like you're nobody you don't matter i'm gonna go ahead and co-sign that i'm gonna go ahead and co-sign that a billion percent because who the f is this kid i never even heard or seen it seen this kid and also he has no identity he looks like a thousand other n words uh shout out to nicaragua saying he writes uh calisthenics or weights which do you like more well um i i like boxing you know i like sparring and fighting that's what i really like and, and that is I'd say more of a cardio and mental exercise. But between the two, you actually need both of them. Calisthenics is the one I keep up with more because I have a heavy travel schedule. But I think weights have a great value and you tend to actually get greater release of uh, endorphins and serotonin, all those feel good feelings when you get the weights in. So I think you should do both. It's an and, not an or. Carrying on. I don't give a fuck, but you ain't the nigga, though. You ain't the nigga. You clout chasing this nigga all day. I ain't been with him in two days. Come on, you been with him in two days. Yeah, nah, hell no, get this right. I'm about to say cut this shit, bro. Oh, I was right. See, I said they were right there in the food court. There they are. <laughs> Shout out to Charleston because I truly respect that. You heard me? He said, I play dirty. I'm a real believer. You, you dig? There are no rules in fighting. The only rule is that I got to win. What the right. fuck, bro? Let me go back to my dead homies. Oh, you're a loser. Oh, my dead homies. Nigga, what kind of homies you got? <laughs> you heard me? You were looking at the camera when Brody wanted smoke. Shut up. Oh. Jesus fucking Christ, bro. I got more than me, nigga. Guns and everything, nigga. I got guns. Don't mean nothing. 
I know all the employees of the food court is like, who the fuck are these nerds? <laughs> the employees of the food court are like, you fucking nerds. Don't shut the fuck up and get out of here for security cup. We're leaving right now. I got you. He's a real nerd when he way over there still yelling out shit to Charleston. Get your nerd ass out of here. Bro, what the don't go to the room, big dog. It's all right. Uh, what a loser. This boy then came back for more fake smoke. This boy don't want no real smoke. He he want that vape beef. That nigga want the vape version. Fake guy then came back. Nigga, you ain't gonna feel nothing no flip out here. Quit in the scene, go to the room. Is this tucked in a white t-shirt? Hell no, nah, this boy weird as hell. I think this black ball and tucked in a white t-shirt and some motherfucking sweatpants. That's crazy. I'm appalled. Go to the room, sir. Go to the room, sir. Go to the room, sir. <laughs> Shout out to the white guy sitting right here. Shout out to this white guy who's a remote worker. This motherfucker, a remote worker. He working a C-suite in Starbucks. This motherfucker then just left his house. Like, look, man, I'ma just, I'ma work from this, uh, I'ma work from this food court real quick. These ignorant ass N-words is fucking up his Zoom call right now. I know he wanna say some shit bad as hell. Like, uh, excuse me, guys. Can you shut the fuck up? I'm on a Zoom call right now, okay? I don't need this shit right now. I'm still doing my performance review. I just got hired. Shut the fuck up. I, I feel him, man. I feel you, bruh. Go to the room, son. Yes. Go to the room, son. This just getting too far, bro. Just because we're the whole town, there's kids, bro. This dude will not do anything, but he also won't leave. <laughs> he sound like a bitch I didn't fuck with before. Won't do anything, but won't leave. You heard me? <laughs> like, look, shorty, I'm going to need you to bust something open or take your ass home. This boy is the worst over here acting like a virgin. Um, I, I'm literally trying to not have you get caught up in here, bro. It's a casino, bro. Prime, Prime, I, you know, I'm riding with you no matter what. No, Prime, I said that. Prime, what do you want me to do? Get in his face and punch him? What the fuck do you want me to do, bro? This is cute. Now Prime's hoe ass. Hey, did you were my friend. Are you my friend or his friend? You're acting like you like Charleston more than me. Do you like Charleston more than me? <laughs> Fucking weirdo. Where do they get these balls? Shout out to Kyron. He writes, I used to mentally tap in with women. My stable was crazy. I took a break. Lately, been women are trying to get into a relationship. Should I keep looking for? <laughs> uh, uh, look, based on the way that was written, I'm not entirely sure of what you're asking, but I think you might be asking you know if you're not trying to get into a relationship should you be pursuing women who are you know more sexually open aka slores i say no do you want an std i mean <laughs> do you want problems in your life no absolutely not uh so no i always try to focus on women who are the most chaste and every now and then you heard me you got a couple jump offs a couple skios that just happen to be around and you know you need it in your life and so you, you know you you go ahead and eat with and jumped on the plate. Carrying on. You know, he's rolling. Bro, I'm, Prime, I'm, I'm trying, so I can't hey, get a word hey, in, bro. Hey, I can't get a word hey, in, Prime. Hey, I can't, you guys, hey, let me, you talk right over hey, me. I can't get a word hey, in, bro. That's <laughs> so emotional. So emotional. God, look at these hoes right here. Oh. Yo, Yo, bro, 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 bro. Bro. This is crazy because the white dude and just told you, I can't get a word in, chill. The black dude's still babbling. Like, he didn't hear him. Like, God damn, I want you to shut the fuck up, too. God damn. Please start calling me on my character, bro. And then when I start calling the character, that's when it escalated. But, bro, I, I can't even get a game. word in, bro. I'm trying to make it mutual neutral. Bro. This boy is so emotional. He's still wearing the purse. You going to fight with the purse on, my boy? You going to fight with the purse on? See, I would love one day, and I, I, hate, I hate that this is true, but I secretly... You know, everybody has a bucket list, probably a normal thing. So on my bucket list, there's a couple of things I want to do that are not entirely legal. You dig on my bucket list. And I was like, ah, should I do them before I go out? I don't want to mess up my legacy. But then again, I'm like, I I'm dead anyways, goddammit. it. And, you know, I would like to take the straps on this boy's purse 
and wrap them straps or you know, I ain't gonna go, I ain't gonna get into it, but this ball weird. Bro, it wasn't no problem for you calling on my character. I swear to God, right? We was all joking about the dick shit. This oh, is what, what, he made me what, what, what he getting so mad for? I agree. This boy is feminine. He's still wearing the purse trying to fight old niggas. Come on, brethren. Still doing all that talking. <sighs> Shit's so fucking. Nah, chat. I just told Sidious to just pause it. Man, for I, can you got your prime? Can we can we squash it, bro? What, what is he? Can so we just mad please squash it and have a good day? He's not prime. Prime. Listen, he was. He was this is weird as hell. Yeah, weird as hell. Same talk to you a little bit of time to send in your comments, questions as we wind down. And thank you to all of those who have supported the work. And of course, most importantly, thank you to those who are members and and consistently support as members. And for those of you who haven't joined the family, we welcome you to this thing of ours. we got a real network. Our guys actually meet up. Our Lady Saints, which is the female section of things, they collaborate. They meet all the time. So, you know, we, we got a real membership. You know, people talk about memberships, but really it's just content. And we give you exclusive content. We also make you a part of something real. You dig? Join the revolution. May I acknowledge Clifton? He writes, how does he get around the bear mace, Saint? Um, well, here's the thing. In life, you have to ask yourself who's swifter and who's more ruthless and who's just pretending. Most people are pretending. 99.9% .9 of people are pretending. And I'd say, generally speaking, I would estimate that Charleston is probably with the ish. Yeah, I'd say Charleston is probably with the ish. But here's what I would say. In the context of that particular environment, I say uh, Charleston is trying to play nice for uh, Zaddy. So he's trying to impress Aiden and be good and you know look like an all right fella. And in as much as that's the case, I think that if you if he really wanted to punch out Charleston, he could have been swift and made it over to Charleston before Charleston could have even got his finger on that button. But the thing is, he didn't want that smoke. You heard me? And listen to me. If you want smoke, you're going to get the smoke. I mean, if you grew up in, in, the, in any hood, you've been in plenty of places and a fade then popped off and it was completely inappropriate. You know, one of my favorite inappropriate fades, I was in high school. There's this big titty light skin girl. She's a bit of a punk rocker, which was not a thing in the hood. And she's a big titty light skin girl, punk rocker. A lot of these dark skin birds were hating on her just because she had the long hair. You dig? They just hate on her. And that's what it get like. I tell you, that's why I stay away from ugly people and broke people. Anyways, there's one time at, you know, they call it nutrition break, which was like a 15 minute break after I think like second period. I don't really know. I wasn't at school that much. But anyways, this day, I fortunately was there and it was nutrition break. And, you know, everybody politicking and you know doing what they do. And then all of a sudden I hear some commotion. Right. And I look over and I see some ghetto ratchet ass black girls confronting this little light skin thing. She was pregnant, though. Anyways, they start boom, 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 sliding her. And people are like, no, stop. She pregnant. Fat black girl. Yeah. I don't give a fuck about her baby. Fuck her baby. Stomping her out. Like, God damn. I didn't even have the heart to pull him off. You dig? I didn't know what happened. I don't like to get involved in other people's shit. But I was looking like, um, I don't know if you wanted an abortion, but it looked like you just got one. It looked like you just got one. Point is, um, inappropriate fades going to pop off when you're dealing with real hitters. You dig? People who really with that. They don't care about nothing. They don't care about nothing. And that's exactly why I always like to pop things off off rip because I don't know what kind of time, you know, other people are on. So I want to, yeah, I, I got to get it going. You heard me? It's kill or be killed out here. So what I'm saying is neither of them really wanted to kill. They just both wanted to babble. And that's what you expect from hoes. You heard me? That's what, that's what they do. That's what they do. Uh, Darius, right? Shout out to these two. <laughs> nigers on this stream indeed uh when we were when will we review what's going on overseas in niger that's a good question i'll probably end up doing it this coming week possibly monday i'll do it on my uh africa world stream and i think it's some fascinating really good things that are happening and also i'm going to do another stream uh kind of in the same vein about uh julius malema who is a, a fake ass african leader in south africa and Afri south africa is a complete a uh, mess of a country. Very disappointing place. May I acknowledge Nicaragua saying he writes, my best friend is needy. How do I distance myself? Well, you distance yourself by distancing yourself, okay? Which is to say you have to reduce 
your response rate. You have to reduce or increase your response time, reduce your response rate, and then cut off the tap. You heard me? When they ask for things, you ain't got it. That's all there is to it. And ideally, when you do things, do them quick and ruthlessly. That's it. Quick and ruthlessly. Tosin, uh, I don't see a cash app from you, but I, I'll just read this anyways, because maybe you sent it under a different name. I don't know. Um, he writes, uh, cut out my vices a few months ago. Thanks for your advice. That's very good to hear. He writes, this brought about the greatest change, improvement, it should be, greatest improvement. Uh, what does being a saint entail? Well, being a saint entails quite a few things. Not not as much as you know you might find you know being a Muslim, which is quite a a lengthy uh, list of requirements, but there are a number of things you can read about some of them on uh, any of our member websites. You click the about button, it'll kind of run down a number of traditions and things we have within our culture. We know that physical fitness is absolutely key, uh, maintaining uh, your strength and spirituality. So avoiding intoxicants, avoiding low women, these kinds of things are core to how we live. And so we invite you, if you haven't become a member, to become a member. And during that, we do a membership intake. So we kind of tell you a little bit more about the ism find out who you are, make sure that you're a normal, respectable, upstanding man. We invite you into this thing of ours and you know, whatever section is closest to you, we have sections around the world. These guys get together, they exercise, they socialize, they do business. And these are the, the great things about being you know, within the SAS. And we welcome you. Saints, it has been a pleasure to have this time to fellowship with you. Let us end this with our tradition. A shout to TA comes in with tuition by a cash app. Let us end this with our tradition, the creed of assassin. Repeat after me with full conviction, knowing this is true of you, the creed of the assassin. I'm going to be who I truly am because I'm remarkable and I'm going to strive every moment to show the greatest part of who I am. Until next time, peace to the saints.